hearing will be held on Wednesday, October 10th, 2018 at 7 p.m. at the West Boylston Town Hall, 140 Worcester Street, West Boylston, Mass., in board meeting room, first floor. For a site plan review application submitted by Andrusic Land Surveying, hope I got that one right, for Flag RV Center as required in the Zoning Bylaws Section 3.6. The project is for the construction of a 50 foot by 120 foot garage and minor alterations to the parking lot located at 66 West Boylston Street, West Boylston, Mass. Any interested person is invited to attend this meeting, at which time you will be given the opportunity to be heard. Copies of the application are available for inspection at the town clerk's office, whose hours are Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., Wednesday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., and Friday, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Thank you. Oh, and the TNG run dates were September 26, 2018, and October 3rd, 2018. Second. Okay. This is an interesting public hearing since the work has already been done. How should we proceed with this, Benny? It's an interesting situation. Um, just have Doug, describe the work that's been done. Yeah, and just yeah. show what's happening. Is there an abutter? There is one abutter here, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, yeah, just put your, put your, uh, put it on the easel. Dr. Yeah. Isaac and Dr. Isaac, so I can put this up on the stand, or I can sure. bring it up closer. No, you, the stand will be good. The stand is good. Maybe move it up a little closer if you'd like. Can you see that, sir? Yes, oh, okay. Yeah, enough, yeah, Thank you. okay. Um, we're here uh, tonight with Mike Flagg, Mike Hammer of uh, the Flag RV. Sorry. <laughs> uh, as has been suggested, it's a little bit of an unusual situation. Usually a public hearing for site plan approval comes before the construction uh, or alteration of a site. Uh, my understanding was that a couple of years ago, the, the flags, the applicants went to the town building department with an application for a building permit to remove an existing building and construct a new one. They were granted such permits and merrily went along and uh, constructed the building. Um, then at some point, uh, someone had made the realization that it really needed to, in order to be finally signed off upon, needed to go through the, the legal and technical uh, procedures of having the public hearing and the planning board site plan uh, review process. Uh, which has brought us to the, the point where we are today. Um, so to quickly summarize what we've got outlined in black is the, the new building that was constructed. It's a garage. It's 50 feet by 120 feet. Um, there used to be a previous building on this area of it here. Uh, that building came down. Uh, and the current building occupies part of what used to be the old building, part of what was paved. And there's a new area here which is now building and some pavement that used to be a gravel surface. Uh, in this area with the, the building and the pavement area, we've now ended up with a, an increase of about 3,000 square feet in impervious area above what existed before. However, while they did this, they made a couple of other minor changes to the parking lot. Uh, they had moved around the propane cage up in front and in the process of doing that, they actually moved 182 square feet of pavement. Uh, they took out their <coughs> pavement for a landscape island and things over here close uh, to the, uh, the restaurant where they actually removed about 2,200 square feet of pavement. So when we look at the increase in, per in impervious area of 3,046 square feet and then what they've removed of the, the 2419, uh, we have a, a slight increase in impervious area. So in order to make that the, the numbers on that even out. Uh, the flags have decided that uh, down in the area that's close uh, to the wetland, they would remove another area of what is existing pavement, so it would take another 1,300 square feet out of there. So that when it's all done, uh, we end up with a net decrease in a previous area of about 691 square feet. Um, in the process of doing this, we had done initial work here back in, oh, excuse me, sorry, in 2004. And uh, we came back and we relocated edges of parking lot, edge of woods to see if any other alterations had been made. And we're showing the edge of gravel parking lot where it was in 2004 and 5 uh, in the existing areas of parking 
And our conclusion is that there really was no appreciable changes one way or the other in uh, the large gravel parking lots out on the site. There had not been any removal of trees or creation of additional parking spaces. So uh, again, to, to sort of summarize, uh, again, we have the building which has been put in. It's already uh, been constructed. And we're here sort of uh, after the fact to uh, have this public hearing, uh, comment from the board's comment from others uh, or other interested parties, and uh, for the flag. Any comments from board members? I had uh, I'd sent an email uh, earlier about the drainage calcs for the stormwater stuff. It, what we were looking for is just something from an engineer, uh, an environmental person that certifies that everything was done that meets the stormwater standards. That's, um, so if you've done it and you show that you've got no, no increase in impervious area, you're not changing things. So what we'd be looking for would be just something that says that, to have that in the file to uh, confirm it. Yeah, um, excuse me, did you send that email to I me? I think I sent, I sent it to you. It might have been an old email before. Okay, all right. Um, I'll search for that or I'll check up well, I'll I can, with you to make sure yeah. we have that. Yeah, but that's all, all we're looking for is some, whether it's just a letter saying, it complies with the stormwater standards and the changes. You're reducing the impervious, impervious area by 691 square feet, just something in writing. Or is it on the plan already? Uh, we've it? got the, the calculations of the impervious area on here. Okay. Uh, we have the pavement removed, pavement to be removed, <coughs> the increase shown here, and the net decrease in area. So the, that calc is right on the plan itself. Okay. okay. Anybody else have a comment? Question? If, if that's on the plan, then we don't need any, any other additional documents. Just that, the, just that it's in compliance with the EP Stormwater standards. Oh, so it's okay. just a statement. Yeah. Yeah. Any of butters have questions or comments? I'm, I don't have a question. I just don't want to make, make a statement. Uh, when you did this, all this engineering and this moving of the earth, what was your original plot for me? That was the one that I looked at. Um, the, years, years the original ago. move years ago. Yes. Um, what we did is we were here in the years 2004 and 5 and had located the situation then. Uh, the edges of pavement, the buildings, the wetlands and things that had existed at that time. Uh, then this past in December, January, uh, we've been out there again and located and made a comparison of that. So um, I can show you the the lines out there, what they what they were, and again, what they exist as today. We didn't find them. There was a big area of trees that had been cleared or anything that went from uh, grass to uh, pavement or gravel or anything like that. Everything was, was really pretty much the same with the exception of taking the old building out, putting the new one in, and then adding an area of pavement over on that side of the building. But if I may, Can we get a, a name and address just for the minute? My name is Norman Melendi. I live on number three, Mark Costello Land. This is my area here. This is my piece of land. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, uh, and I've been watching the uh, parking lot being extended back into this. At the time it was wetlands. There was a stream that was running on this side. Now the stream is running way over here. They're pushing it. They're pushing this back. So, this drawing was a nice big drawing that's been made to uh, show how it is today. And so there's no, there's no other drawing I know of that has a view like this. Other than he's telling, I know the back of this has been pushed back, so it's quite a bit of length. Um, what I can show you is. Um, But uh, we've got this edge of woods that we have here. But this whole part that was here. was what existed again in 2005, <clears throat> and that has not altered uh, at all in what we find today. There's no, been no, so there's no, been no, no clearing no, 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 because there was never any water on this piece of land right up to here. There was never any water up in here. Now it's all flooded up into here. Is that because this has been pushed back? Push this, they push the earth back. And when and when did uh, when do you think they did that? 
to it recently. Well, they've been doing it the last, the last couple of years. But anyway, it's done. No, yeah. no. I've been there since 2000. That was all like that when I started working there. So, because it's not. Been there since 81. Well, we had a meeting so. the first time. We had a meeting about this, about this stuff. I know. I asked at the time the secretary that was here, the building department. I said, I asked if you were going to do a walkthrough. You know, a, you know, if you're going to check the, the, the lane itself. And he said no. It had already, had already been approved. So that's how it's like, but, uh, but I know that there's been pushback. And I know that they've relocated the stream. This stream used to be, first of all, there wasn't ever, really, there was a very small amount of water that was running through here. Is, is that your property? Yes, that yes, it's mine, yeah. There's a very small, small amount. Whose property is this here? There's, there's not much This property here no, is no, no. Uh, right here. Whose property is that? Green is this part of our review. Uh, play. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Just yeah. Is is this changing? But, 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 but this no. is this no. the area where you got you got pushed back. Okay. Before we bought that piece. Of you know, before the there was a, a, a mound right here was a, was a ridge that was put in there by, by machinery, and that is has been pushed back. And that's I think we also have something here. And the, and the further you get down this pack a lot. This has all been pushed all, all the way back before that stream was running. Yeah, Henry Zog did that 30 years ago. Yeah. He told them to do it. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> There's been a lot of things that have gone on in the site, but I think exactly. I think what we want to do is. Um, but it's done. Right. Yeah. Right. So this is, and this is, what we are, this is where we're at. I just want to ask, can can ask what the is there? Did we get back anything? to his property? This is the only thing. Is, is your property, is it any different than it was before? My the, first came the, here. On the border of your property. On my border here? Uh, yes. Uh, right now, the, uh, the water, we used to have a hostess down here. We have hostess here. It was dry. When was that? About 20 years ago. It was dry. And I went to Henry Zarvin and he said, yeah, you can use this piece of property. You can use a piece of property down front. To run the horses on, but uh, anyway, it's uh, it's it's changed dramatically. This the stream it was it was never really in the stream, in there, but now all the surf water you know, it comes from all down Henry Street, down Marymount Road, and down into the circle. It all runs up above the ground. The catch basins don't don't do any good up here. Along Henry Street, there's catch basins. But on that side, yeah, uh, right, right up above up on Henry Street, which is not shown here. The water runs down. Very Mountain Road down in this circle, and on top of the ground. It's not even catch basin. Across your property again? Yeah, yeah. It comes back up here, right? Right. And you get it uh, down here. This is there's, there's two pipes that are feeding uh, feeding the street the street water. I don't know which way to. Um, the, this property up here, the, there were two lots, and this was extended as part of the, through the definitive subdivision process. Um, I'll note that. 15 years ago? 15 plus years ago, it was approved by the, the planning board after review. Um, and then the, the road was developed, accepted, uh, lots were sold out. Uh, this property is all uphill of the flag property down here, so I, I, I don't think any water from here is, is running up there. No, there's no water running on the yeah, It sounds like it's coming down the street. Yeah, so yeah, from the we're just getting from the other boats. Yeah. The water is running down the here now. It's running over this lane here. It's nothing new. And is is there a cul-de-sac or something there? Yeah, yeah. This is this is a cul-de-sac right here. Yeah. With, with, yeah. With, yeah. It was yeah. done for two lots, as one else, and then you you own this and own that other lot, correct? Yeah, yeah. Is it there? Anyway, street? It's done. Henry? It's that comes next row. Yeah. Sure. So that's what he was saying. Mm -hmm. From the Henry Street, it's going down. Well, there's a stream also that comes out though. Well, there's a stream down at the bottom. And that was something. Did you ever contact uh, Bill Chase yep. of the Conservation Commission? He, he, comes down. Down. He, is, uh, yeah, he was supposed to come down. Oh, he's he's to to he hasn't talked to me at all. The, I haven't heard of him. We came in Friday. We went over the yeah. whole lot. We went over everything to show him the drains. Drains in the building that go to the the uh, oil water separator where it pumps out and goes into the town sewer. Show them all the drainage off the building that the gutters go down into, goes across, goes out to the retention pond, 
where all the riprap is going to be done, the swale is going to be done, and he is extremely happy with all the conservation. He says he's the town is good with it, especially so with the, little, the more impervious that we're putting in. He's extremely happy with that. And we're going to put more uh, riprap around the edge of it to make it nicer. And so that's like, caught and put into your all the water that comes off of that new impervious is caught and put into the retention pond. Correct. So there is some drainage. Okay, that's there, good. There is drainage. It's all okay. planned. It's been proposed yep. to everybody. They approved yep. it. So you said you spent a lot of time doing it. Oh, he doesn't have to. Yeah. No. It's Bill. Bill Chase is extremely happy because there's no more water better. settling behind the building. If he has everything's going out. Yeah. Everything is getting yeah. filtered. The pumps right. down over at Walmart have no sand going through because of the way we have our double stepped out with retention ponds. And the retention pond is way down that end. It's down by. No. It's right down over here. This is the retention pond right down in this corner here. Oh, okay. Right over here. And hey, where are those so fire hydrants? hydrants? There's no fire hydrants. No, the hydrants right across from Walmart. I'm just in the Walmart Plaza. There's a pump station that this all runs out to to go out towards Worcester Street. So all the water that's coming from yep. under here goes, goes out, goes down, goes underground, under roof fall over to Walmart and gets pumped out that. Oh, yeah, and that pump station, is that shown on there? It's no. not on there because that's no. not our problem. No. It's no, I'm just trying to get myself oriented as well. Yeah, okay. It's up in the middle of Walmart. Plaza. Oh, yeah, I'm thinking of the one across, like, at that light. Just on the other side, there's, there's something right oh, there's there. Oh, there's wood pump station right there. Yeah. That's okay. a town well pump station. Yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's, yeah, not it's not drainage. Not one. The one you're talking about is over on the other side. Yes. Of the street. Okay. okay, there is. That you go to for your drainage. Right? There's no drainage pump station. There's that's what Bill Chase told us. Okay. So, I, see conservation. Yeah. I'm I know, right? It's right. That's you right. Know, you're, yeah. you, you know your stuff at ECR, and that's great, but he's local conservation. I'm going to go with him. Right. Sounds good. I Is suggest it, any, any drainage concerns or water concerns be brought up to the right. Conservation Commission. Yep. It's, well, it's we have out. to do our stormwater approval. Well, if we can get a, just a certification yeah. to make it easy, get a certification saying it meets DEP standards, then we use that and we use that in our approval letter and say based on this. Because that's just that's it's a we, site plan review and stormwater approval, mm -hmm. both, right? And both things at the same time. So that's the only reason we need that right. bit of it. Yeah, he did. I don't know if you're here. He didn't get the email that he sent. Yeah, yeah. So that's, yeah. 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 Well, I, I it went to DA survey. Okay, yeah, I wasn't yeah, that, sure if that's, that's probably no longer a valid one, but uh, I can I can get up to you on that. That's no okay. Problem. Okay. So it was that. Um, and then, so we never we didn't get anything from conservation commission. They got. Plan and no so response. Open the file and Are there any letters from other boards? I'll be right in front of it. Can we read? Education hearing notice. <coughs> Wouldn't be in here. Would be, it would be no, no. loose. Sure. Okay. Right out front. So we have no okay. comments. So, yeah. have so he wasn't upset enough to write. So that's right. fine. They have 30 police, days yeah, to police department. If they didn't, it's assumed that they're okay. Right? Police department says okay. Police department says okay. Oh, okay. So we did get something. I put. I usually put that in the approval. Yep. Nothing from the fire. No notes. Nothing from anybody else. Okay. Um, are there other comments from uh, Butters or the public? Okay. And the only other thing I had in the uh, email was. One of the lights when I was driving down Route 12 North, the floodlight that's at the corner by the manor, it's kind of aimed out into the street. If you, you can drive by and see it tonight, just take a look and see if it's, it seems pretty bright coming out, if it's a possibility to turn it or put a shade on it. So that would be something that we'd want. So that what we can do, I mean, we, the public hearing is probably closed tonight. We'll get the certification. I'll draft the approval letter for uh, signing at the next meeting. You can do the ripping up of the pavement or do whatever work is associated with it. Twist the light, do the uh, pavement removal, and then come back to us and say everything's been done, substantial compliance, and then we write the certificate of completion. Okay. Could be done by December. Wonderful. So no other comments? I'll entertain motions to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. 66 for Flag RV, 66 for Florissant Street. 60. Second. You got that? That's it. Second. Aye. 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 <laughs>
Two. Two. Opposed? Okay. You're all set? Thank you. Okay. All right. And if you could sign in, a uh, couple that yeah. came in. Yeah. Any, yeah, any folks who came in, could you could please sign in? Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Do you need to approve this? Do you want to say? Do we need to approve today? We can either do it today or wait for the next one. the letter. It doesn't matter. Okay. I don't know that there's a rush. Let's get it over since the work's Just all done. Just in case I get shot at my meeting. Yeah. As moderator. Are you going out of town? Okay. Tomatoes don't. We have to get it done. Tomatoes won't kill you. What? I'm worried about it. It's not anxiety. Ah, that's I see. That's true. I might not even be like this. I might not be here next time. Huh? You're not going to be here next time? I don't know. Well, right. Okay, so is the feeling we'll do it next time? Okay. Board members? Thank you. Is the chair we'll, we'll have something to look at. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. Then we have old business. Right on the money. Good. Yes, yeah. sir. Sticking with it. Modification for the plan at Emuji. 1800th century drive. Let's see if I still have my picture. That's, boy, I know, I know, I know that drawing by heart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So as we uh, were here last time discussing uh, getting rid of the, the parking. parking spaces up on the hill. Mm -hmm. Right. This park in the area, uh, up in here, um, as we had, we had, we had discussed. Oh no. Um, no I got my picture back. Um, yeah. We had discussed um, that the real the need for that was they had trainings like four times a year, and then as they've gotten into the budget and the construction estimate, as they're ready for construction, they decided, geez, that's a lot of money. For yep. four times a year, um, yep. so we're looking to, to get rid of that. We had a discussion before, and so we revised the plans and, and so we look electronically. And unfortunately, it's in my truck. I have rules oh. of plan for you. I'll, I'll grab them in a minute. Uh, and so we revised the plan. This is one of the sheets. It's like getting rid of that parking area up here, and the rest of the site's really existing. So this is this is the grade that exists now. It's all this is all existing here, yeah. And um, so, keeping the same driveway around, putting in a building basically where there's just grass now, which was intended to be a building. Some of the comments that we had last time was about the traffic patterns. So we've shown two proposed do not enter signs, one on each side of this driveway. So this becomes a, a one way. Also proposing, uh, no, I got cut off here, but a, um, a right turn only as you come in. So it's basically come in, right turn only to help. Go if these do not enter signs, to yeah. do it. Uh, propose uh, right turn only. And I think as we discussed before, the parking requirements, you need um, 56 parking spaces <coughs> when you add on this extra building, the total. When we had the extra 100 or so up here, we had more than enough parking for that. Uh, but now with this parking lot going away, the existing spaces that are there today, there's 54. So we need to add two. We're gonna add, we're gonna add one here at the end of this row and add one here at the end of that row. So this just happens to be you know, plenty of landscape island there that we can just take a little bit away and that accommodates um, those two spaces. So the the plan uh, definitely, the scope gets significantly reduced. It really becomes a building project, uh, not so much a site project. And you're training people are all gonna find parking spaces. So then it's a, so the for, the, for the training, uh, what was discussed was exactly, yeah, they'll what? probably oh. go to a hotel, you know, a conference center. You know, oh, okay. Something yeah. like that, okay. so it's yeah. uh, yeah. a lot more cost effective. <laughs> or just use right. the parking lot that's down at the beginning of Century Drive on the uh, you know, Woodford. Right. Uh, it's got tons of it. It's got a ton of old <laughs> space there. Yeah. That's right. Uh, like, that place? Yeah. Yeah. No, the, oh, that's, we have the place oh, yeah. on the right, the psychiatric yeah. hospital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On yeah, the yeah. first floor. They can just double park. <laughs> they can just double, they can just double <laughs> triple park here on Century Drive. Not a lot of traffic there. So on a regular day, working day, 
Is that parking is enough? Fifty six. Yes. Should be enough. Oh yeah. So the change appears to be a significant change dollar-wise and work-wise, but it's removing some of the work, so it's pretty much what we approved the first time. So right. it wouldn't be right. considered a needing an amended site plan review. It's a reduction right. of just, what they're proposing. Right, and we so we just we just discussed it last time. It would right. be a, not considered a major enough change to trigger another. Other hearing, especially since it was, since it was, a, since it was a reduction in impervious area and yeah. less impact for stormwater and all that stuff, so it's a heading in the right direction. Yeah. Right. Did you do any test holes yet? Not yet. No, not that I'm aware of. No. Uh, they, they have started putting erosion control out for getting get ready to get going on construction. So they started putting erosion control out, and I know they're planning on on reaching out to VHB um, for for inspections. I think with. <laughs> The removal of this, uh, I don't think they're going to be doing a lot of building-related inspection, so I think their scope is going to get uh, significantly reduced. Right. Um, but they're going to be reaching out to them very soon to, to line that up. Okay, that sounds so, good. So I think the question was before, what's the mechanism? Um, is it just a letter of acknowledgement? Um, um, we, we haven't really done this, so... We could do it as a, we could just draft a letter saying that the, the changes sh as shown on plan such and such. Right. Yeah. And this is What's identified it? by, so is a date the there yeah. or a Actually, number? We just run out, I'll grab the roll. Sorry. That's all right. Yeah. September 28th. Uh, no, it's got a new one in there. Oh, no, it's October It's a list of revisions. So there was uh, there was one in June, one in July, one in August, and one in September, and the latest one is revision number four, dated September twenty eighth. So this is a full set. That same date, just as you mentioned. Uh, revision, yeah, okay. September twenty eighth, two thousand eighteen. Now, do we have to sign another set of these, or? Um, yeah, we probably should. And did you sign the other one? No, we did. Well, I yeah. hope so. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then you probably should I don't sign know. These, then. Well, but if we're. But then we have a new set of drawings in the file that didn't go through one. Right, but we have a letter saying that it's reflecting these right. data Changes. plans. Okay. So that's what we could probably go by. Come all in. Yeah. yeah, sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> sounds great. Do they have to right? record oh. this in the registry of deeds? Do they have to record this in the registry of deeds? No. These are just working drawings. They, 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 they shouldn't even have done the other thing, I think. The, 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 the not yet. Okay. Yeah, these aren't recordable uh, mm -hmm. plans. These aren't property plans. Yeah. Perfect. So. <laughs> Mark, you're going to just draft a, a letter saying... Does he want it this when's, year? When's the construction? <laughs> when is the construction start? You said they're putting a baby up. Five years? So we just, we, can do that. we got to draft a letter <laughs> saying I that... I did draft a letter, it's an X right there. Right. <laughs> saying that the plans, the approved plans are revised to be the 928. Okay. And how many... No, I'm not going to draft it. But how many in that set? Uh, uh, table of contents, yeah. Uh, six. Seven. Uh, seven, sorry. <laughs> so basically it's the, it's the same same set of plans, just a new revision date. This is a lot of shit. Same like set of plans, just a new revision the, Yeah, but one of them shows that there's no parking. What? I hope one of them shows without parking. We updates the parking numbers. So it's eight, eight sheets with um, yeah, okay. eight, so eight total sheets. So it's the same, it's the same package. Right. You know, a new revision date because it, the product had changed. So it's, you refer so, to a new date. Yeah, this shows no, yeah. Okay. Uh, this is right here. right here. All right. No parking on this. Did you update that? This, this is the existing condition. Yeah. This is the site and grading plan. The utility plan, so it's they all look the same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the the front sheet updates the part numbers, basically, and stuff like that. 
Yeah. 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 you know, before this total uh, space is 54 existing plus two proposed. Okay. Yeah, so 56 total. And I, I, I don't want it to be any more complicated than it needs to be, so I would say we just sign this one so that there's a new working drawing. And I don't know how to get it really into the files officially, but we could sign it. That's fine. You're suggesting you sign this sheet right here. Well, oh, is, is this a yeah, these are for you. I brought two copies. Is it? Like like the other one, stamped or anything? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you want to do that and then yeah. scan those in. That'll be the working drawing set instead of the old rev. Yeah, yeah. We can do it that way. We could do all sorts of ways, but yeah, that works. We or can sign. Other ways is there? Just, well, well, I think just a, send a letter. I think a letter is, is probably easy. important just as well. Yes. Yeah, we're going to do a letter no matter what. Yeah. And do we sign the plans or not? I remember you guys brought it up last time. Well, maybe, yeah. The concern about making sure whoever's looking at it has the right plans. Uh, making sure if you go into the file, geez, which ones are the right ones? Right. I'm just thinking personally, if I go into a file years from now, I see a signed one and That's I see an one. unsigned one, you'll I'm taking the, the signed you'll one. Believe sure. the signed and then you'll drive up the street and be like, they forgot that whole parking lot. <laughs> right. <laughs> they forgot to put it in. It all makes sense to us right now because yeah. it's fresh right. in our hands. It does. Um, all right, so we yeah, sign it. Okay, we'll sign it. We'll sign the, yeah, okay. So am I motioning to accept <laughs> the revised site plan? Yep. Dated. Dated. September, <laughs> September 28th of 2018. That removed the, Is that the revision that on there? Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, yes. The uh, extra parking lot. Yeah. The extra parking lot. I've seen in the X out section up there on the television. <laughs> that was a motion? That's the motion. All right. Second. Five seconds. All in it's favor? Stable, so we have to just flip Aye. 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 Did I hear? Uh, uh, Aye. Abstain? Aye. Okay. No, I'll abstain. Yeah. Okay. What? I'll vote an I, whatever, I'm not <laughs> uh, He's going to be a moderator at the time meeting. Oh, no. oh, that's the scary part. Oh, oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not. Sounds like it'll be a 10-10 today? Yeah, 10-10. Yeah. How come? Um, because he said Marjorie, no. Everyone I saw else, the email because he every, said no. Everyone else was busy. John's out in town. Everyone else everyone in town. Everyone John else in town was busy. You're going to be next on the list. The guy stand, is sitting on the corner there. He's busy. So we should, should we check approved as submitted or with conditions or with revisions? Just as submitted. Oh, is there a check block? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what did we do as, sub as submitted. As submitted. As submitted. So we're not making any changes. Yeah. We have that. I got it. I am. I can still get by. Sometimes, sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm bigger than the space, and I don't realize it. <laughs> oh, you get used to it. Oh, that, that, yeah. that, that don't fit there. <laughs> Forget the last time. Do you guys scan them or should we scan them? You would scan it. it. <laughs> you would scan it. The best, that's the best scan we get. So. Right, I, I, I forgot it. <laughs> Which is <laughs> flawless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we don't sign these, that's the official drawing. So I don't know if you want to. Which room we were having a meeting? I realized. So you can take that, scan that, and sign it. Right, okay. Big red X, can we take it? Yep. Send me up, make sure I get the paper copy of the two. You bring, and bring, we'll give you the. Yeah, it's why I need a paper copy for the file. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. All right, it's all filled in. You just got your signatures. So that's the second sheet, second set. So if you want to sign two sets, you can keep one. I think they get lazy. They want to sign everything. That's fine. <laughs> Unless you feel like it. I'm on, I'm, I'm on all in if everybody wants to. I'll do it. So I don't have to bring one back. I know. That's great. Wow. I know. <laughs> you still got to email back the scan, though. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Next time I'm going to bring my signature stamp. Just tell me. Maybe we just, <laughs> maybe we just do that and just stamp it. We got to stamp it. Just yeah. Authorize they're her cheap. to stamp they're, it. They're not expensive. Signature stamp. Would that be legitimate? I mean, 
yeah, that's acceptable. They, they're acceptable for lots of the registrar stuff. And, yeah. You know, usually that has to be pretty beneficial. <laughs> Once in a while, you know, if I'm notarized, if it's something that's notarized, Should we have to bring in to do an like current signature. transcripts, you know, copies of the transcripts? Yeah. Verify. To verify, yeah. make sure. That's right. I own your records. Right. <laughs> Check out the grace. Did you pass? Yeah. 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 Got the degree, yeah. that's yeah. all that matters. Oh, did he get the deed? <laughs> I got it. Man. You write a novel over there? Eight pages. Just eight, eight times. <laughs> You're doing two sets. Yeah, doing yeah. Oh, he's doing both. Good, you just went through like both sets. That's good. <laughs> Didn't have to. Mine, it's mine all right. You're there. There you go. <laughs> don't do that. Okay, okay, here, why don't you give me yeah. a second? Take one set. Six. Six. I didn't know what you said. I'm about to just sit down for a second. Yeah. We can pull a chat. That's a, what a gentleman. All right. I'm oh, what a gentleman. Where are you signing? You're signing. I'm going to sign the letter. I'm going to see letters. Yeah. That's probably more. Thank you. It's all right. <laughs> Is there something we can actually just discuss here? What's next on the agenda? The review of the Holy Cross Contemplative Center as built plans. Any uh, any new information from that? I don't think we've gotten no. comments. So we, we haven't gotten the uh, no, information. No, no, we're, we're going to ask them about it. We're yeah, I haven't gotten any response. Check that, that off. Check that off. We're done. No, we, we, they want their certificate of completion. Oh, I know. Yeah. Check we it off. Check it off. Check it off. Check it off. Check it Do they know what they're... Do they know what we're waiting for? Yeah. Right, I think so. Trade I thought we had trade seats. Good idea. Yeah. <laughs> sort of papers. <laughs> is, um, the solar. Oh no, he. Well, we are kind of. He said he's gone out there and did some work, but he's not done yet. So he said okay. when it's all done, then he'll have it all finalized. At the solar field at the old landfill. Yeah. They came in for the site plan review for the solar solar array, and we hadn't seen anything in a year and a half, asked him for the as built and he and reminded him that the or asked him about the status on the uh, the perimeter trees. Well, we started trees. doing a bunch of construction like two days so, ago. Right and so they yeah. okay. they are in the process of taking those out and putting in landscaping. Who, whose trees are the town trees, right? Those are town. It's either in the road as town trees or on the but, uh, land okay. who cut the trees? The land um, the solar Array. Yeah, um, but that's a town tree. Right. The whole thing's a town They didn't get to that. Uh, they didn't get any permission from the town. You're up. I they You're thought up. they were the town. No. <laughs> we were talking about that. So well, I, I thought it's a certain size where you need to get permission from the town. Uh, well, did we get any comments I from the know. Board of Selectmen when we were nope. doing that site plan review? Nope. Well. What? Well, the plan that they submitted showed that they were going to take down the trees. Yeah. And now there's a question of whether they got permission to take down the trees. They, we gave them permission, but we don't have the authority to do that. Done now. What's in that final inspection permit? What's that? What's in that final inspection permit? No. Oh, no, there's the no, town work, arborist or whatever has to do with it. It was work outside of the, or within the town's right of way. One, two, three, four. Okay, so two, what else three, can we four, discuss five. on here? I just picked four. You just picked four? So I figured oh. there was a chair and a clerk and somebody and then me. No, that's all right. Mr. X. Mr. X. <laughs> and I signed that subdivision from 15 years ago, by the way, on the cul-de-sac of flags. Oh, okay. Now we know the problem. Yeah. <laughs> you should have brought that up. They would have loved that. Oh, <laughs> but there was no problem with it. It's just no one cleans the catch basins. And well, how big is the? Yeah. How big is? Is that part of like his the whole development? Was that all at once? He came in and proposed. Oh, like the, his neighborhood. Is that all one no. development? Well, no. 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 no, no. Those streets have been there for, since the twenties or earlier. 40s. So most would, of them. What? what 
What was that development? How big is that development? Two houses. Three lots, I think. Three? Oh, okay. I think there are two houses there. Two I houses. think Mr. Melendez bought one of the lots. Okay. So I think it was built as two or three lots. So it was just a little stub. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not a very long street at all. Okay. And apparently, Shakespeare. all the water drains down it. Well, it's a well, pretty steep slope. Well, the whole yeah. his street is. All well, the streets there. Yeah, it comes from the golf. It starts at, 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 at the Prospect the Golf Course. Yeah, right. all the water flows down from there. And everybody knows you go up to the golf course to go sledding because of the heavy. Exactly. And that's the way the water flows. How many kids have got brain damage going down? Water usually flows. I don't like that one as much. It's not my favorite. I like the I like the shorter but steeper hill in the town park area. Oh, behind the high school? No, by the bandstand. No, by the bandstand. Yeah. I like I like uh, the I like the thrill of the quick steep downhill. The, 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 the golf course is too. You know where the summer house is? So we're looking at the right summer right house, the bandstand's over on the road. Oh, I think we were talking about the bandstand in town, like right in... Oh, the gazebo. No, 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 not the gazebo. I was like, where do you slide there? Yeah. Into, the it, into, right into the cemetery? Into the cemetery. It's right into the cemetery. It's really into great. Into the cemetery there. <laughs> See more of a water slide, not lazy river fan. That's it. Exactly. Yes, to go pick up this exactly. Know. That's okay. Cool. What? I was just thinking that because I'm leaving at 30 and, and you can take over the practice room. Have you ever been there? Who's vice chair? Yeah. So, is it Who's vice chair? So, is it Sarah, are you vice chair? Yeah. What's up? Are you vice chair? Okay, too late for me. No, I don't have it. I've been talking about this because I'll be out. Now. Well, like, I might be out for a little while or something. Are you vice chair? No, he's clerk. He's clerk. Are you vice chair? No, I thought you were treasurer. No, he's treasurer. He's treasurer. And I'm clerk, so it's you or Mark. Yeah. Here, I'll be vice chair. Okay. But it's probably minutes. <laughs> well, it's just if he leaves, vice chair takes over. So I'm wondering yep. who it is. Oh, yep. gotcha. Good. Yep. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll take Wait. over. Good. <laughs> Have a problem with that. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. set. This is, uh, you uh, worked uh, that. And, and this is our copy. Uh, okay. uh, okay. uh, okay. We're at the bottom. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. We're just here for fun. Right. No, no, no. That's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Saturday, seven thirty. Do you want to take that with you? No, I want the last one. Could I? Well, I we could appreciate that a lot. How much the other ones? Uh, well, we could do that. Yeah, we can take that. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Right there outside. I thought that was Thank you. Yeah, it might be. Okay, we had a suggestion that oh. we, uh, we skip ahead to the HPP discussion, housing production plan discussion. That's easy. Okay, so we can do that. Any objection? No, no, no. no. Okay, no. come on up. We're mostly ready. I need the uh, click share dongle. Oh, uh -oh. who was that? Do you have the key to that? Click share thingy. Dongle. Is it upstairs? You may be at the fist. No, oh, don't. Go to that room. Do you want me to go get it in the room? I don't know where it is. I was just going to find Chris. On the side <laughs> room. Select board in a yes. The, the I will get it. The TV room? Yeah. You go in there? Yeah. Which will be there? Which I was so on. encouraged that it was already in here when I saw someone else's plans. I'm sorry about no, that. No, you can use <laughs> you can use this. Oh, I didn't realize. I just got I'm ready to go. You want to go through whatever's next on... Uh, Sure. Oh, no, it's not Village Center. So. <laughs> as long as it's not Village Center. Oh. So we're done with one. We're done with three. Yep. A police station closeout update. Yep. Um, I think we sent a, an email back to Anita saying we wanted to, we needed as-built plans that show the fence or something showing the fence. What I heard is an offense is not a, not, not, it's an addition, right? So it's the fence was not a condition of our approval. So it's got to be shown on the as-built plan. Even if it's on the abutter's property. That's what they agreed to right. when they came to us. They said, oh, yeah, well, it's not in the contract. We said, that's fine. It's like we did on this other one. It's going to be shown on the as-built. Okay. And they did the as-built before they finished the fence. I saw an email about that. Has that letter been sent out? Or is yeah, I did see it. I think the email went out, but I haven't gotten any, I haven't seen any response. It wasn't one that was response. Okay. So, yep. So okay. it's up to them. We'll wait. Thank you. Funny, he knew that we were looking for him. <laughs> <laughs> <No. laughs> it. He was standing there, I opened the door. He's like, 
Yeah. <laughs> Psychic. All right, let me remember how to do this. Yeah. You must have ESPN. Yeah. You go to File Explorer, click, click share. Click share. Find your click share. And it does the thing and it turns solid. Oh. Don't turn solid. I can tell it wants to. Just. Or just click it. Nice yeah. head. That's a right. nice click set oh, Please is. open Click Share Drive and start software application. Oh, we're doing it. We yeah. got we got the spinning circle. <laughs> For the dots? <laughs> no dots yet, just spinning circle. It's been crabby today, so we'll see how this goes, but I think it'll be just fine. There we go, it says connecting to base units. Awesome. Ready to share. Here we go. There it hey. is. Hey! Right. Boom! Great. Let's have it look like this. Fine. Let me see about this. What did I want it to do? The slideshow. The slideshow. That, always that. Let's start from the beginning. Good place to start. All right, now we can go to the next page. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so why are we here this evening? <coughs> um, uh, we are presenting the town's housing production plan, which we've just completed. You should have received the final version just yesterday, but there are very few changes from the version that you had a chance to read over the last couple of weeks. Uh, the purpose of the housing production plan is to satisfy the requirements under Chapter 40B um, to enable you to maintain local control over land use decisions, and also to evaluate ways that you can meet your own local housing needs at the same time. So the plan that we've drafted meets the requirements for a housing production plan, and in order for it to be approved by DHCD, it needs to be adopted by the planning board and the board of selectmen. So our hope is that you will um, like what you see and be willing to adopt the plan. Um, so it's understood, just one more note, it's, it's understood that the town likely meets the land area minimum for, um, for the threshold under 40B. Um, but that's not, that finding is not certified by DHCD. So having the housing production plan and meeting the housing production targets will provide another layer of protection. I think that was told to us the last time we yeah. had the housing production plan and Fair. we put it in there. And they said, this doesn't mean we endorse this, this just means we accept your housing production plan. Yeah. DHCD's basic position is that they're not taking a position unless you've been challenged on it. Um, yeah. There have been recent revisions to the land area calculation. The courts have been very clear that the state needed to issue more guidance on what does and does not count. Um, preliminarily, based on those changes, it's still, um, we can neither confirm nor deny, but it still seems yeah. that way. <laughs> Um, so I'm just going to skip over the data, but I just wanted to point out that just a year ago you prepared a housing needs analysis and uh, part of the requirements of the housing production plan is to look at the housing needs and we came up with very similar conclusions as you um, have found in previous planning studies. But the purpose of looking at the demographics is that they're supposed to inform, um, you know, not just what is currently happening, but also uh, to help you kind of establish trend in what you may be facing in upcoming years and uh, take the opportunity to kind of look at it from that perspective as well. Um, and so it's probably not surprising that in West Boylston you do have a population that is aging, uh, particularly because you're near the medical community in Worcester, um, that it, West Boylston is seen as an attractive place um, for seniors. Um, I didn't know that. It is, I, we were actually told this by several people that you're actually getting an influx, not a huge influx, but to a small degree because your housing costs are relatively affordable and there's good access to medical care. Smart seniors. Is that but a rental or is that ownership? You see it in both. Because yeah, we just, I mean, we put in 260 units of over 55 housing, so. That is so really why it, look like <coughs> it triggered a little bit. Well, and, certain, and certainly that is um, that is something that you would see a little bump um, in the data at, at you know over you know that one projection. But when you're looking at your overall population forecast, regardless of whatever you build, generally speaking, it's trending in that direction. And so, uh, because of that, uh, the thing you know, because we see a rise in single-person households um, of, of a variety of ages. 
Uh, we see a rise in uh, family rental households. Um, and so these are kind of the things that we're seeing in the, in the data and so how that imp uh, impacts what kind of housing you might need is going to look more like, um, like you said, putting senior units on the market that um, are visible and meet basic design, um, you know, universal design criteria for accessibility. Uh, moderately priced housing, um, not necessarily capital A, capital H affordable housing, but actually moderately priced housing. Um, your realtors reflect that um, everything that's in the two hundred to four hundred thousand dollar range has a huge amount of demand for it, and just not nearly enough supply to keep up. Things are being taken off the market before they even hit it when you're in that um, in that price point. Um, and also deeply affordable rentals, which um, for those of you who hang out in housing is known as 30 to 50% of the area median income, but it's basically um, the lower end of low income. And that's particularly um, necessary for people who are on fixed incomes or people who are disabled or other uh, population groups. All right, so then the next thing we look at is your goals. So there are two goals, two sets of goals. The first is defined under Chapter 40B the numerical target for the amount of affordable housing that you're trying to, that you need to create to reach their minimum threshold of 10%. So um, the total year round, this, the 10% the is measured against the last decennial census, which is in 2010, obviously. Um, and that shows that you need 273 units in total to meet that threshold. And right now you've created, including the most recent 40 <coughs> development that was completed, 221 um, units are, um, are actually you've created 223 units, but um, we anticipate a correction of two units. So 221 units are already in existence, which means that you need 52 additional units to meet that threshold. Um, and after 2020, based on the development that's occurred, um, over the last eight years, we are projecting what the year-round census will show in 2020, which is close to 3,000 units, so your 10% um, target at that point would be 300 units. Mm -hmm. And we base that number based on building permit activity, so we look at what you've been doing over the last 10 years. The census is not going to do a one-to-one -one match on that and be 100% accurate, but it gives us actually a slightly more accurate count of what it's kind of the maximum of what you might see. Um, and so that does result in a, in a delta with the increase of 72 units from 52. So we also look at um, what are the town of West Boylston's land use goals. And we've gleaned from a number of prior planning documents that have been produced over the last decade, um, boiled down what we saw into three goals that we feel kind of captures what um, impacts your housing um, goals for the community to provide a variety of housing options that meet the incomes, needs, lifestyles of a diverse population without taking away the appeal of West Boylston as a small town. To provide all of the citizens with the greatest possible spectrum of basic services directed at publicly expressed community needs at the least possible cost. And to continually support a strong economic base for the community. So we kind of kept this framework in mind as we looked at strategies. <coughs> Does that last one mean a tax base? Yeah. Okay. Well, economic base, tax base, and... But not necessarily business. It would be more of the... They're all, they're all interrelated, um, whether you look at it just as a property tax base. It's like the difference between commercial and residential and always wanting to shift the burden, of, you know, generally to the commercial side so that the residents don't feel it as much. But it's also intrinsically linked between housing and economic development because businesses require having a workforce that they can use to operate and if they don't have a place to live then they don't then businesses be able to gain. So like in high value real estate markets where the restaurant industry is also popular, you can imagine that there's a little bit of a disconnect between line cooks and dishwashers being able to live anywhere near the actual restaurant. So we do try to have a little bit of a mis or a little bit better match between what the you know what the jobs are locally, what's here in West Wales and what's here in the region and also um, whether or not your housing is appropriate to also meet those needs. So it's not just about, you know, it's not just about your tax levy, you know, as an isolated place. It's also about kind of how the region functions and your place in it and you know making sure that um, you remain competitive in the region. 
So how do you evaluate that goal, the idea of strong economic base for the community? It sounds like a nice thing, but how does that actually apply to what you What do you put in here? Real, really realistically, what that means is housing diversification. When you predominantly have one kind of housing um, and only that kind of housing, you're going to generally attract more or less a, a monoculture of human. Okay. Um, and so, um, and you have put up a couple of large multifamily buildings, and so it seems like one of the things that is missing right now is kind of smaller projects. Um, you know, not necessarily a hundred units at a time, but something that's more um, in scale with, you know, 12 to 16 units, not necessarily these 90, but something that's a little closer to the infill, especially because you have such sensitive um, ecological concern, particularly with water supply. You don't have that much land, and so you know the basic, you know the basic economic needs that we see. I don't have CEOs of health systems telling me that often that we need more high-end housing, but he does tell me that he's concerned about where his laundry is, you know, where his housekeeping staff is going to stay. So it's usually that. Supporting a strong economic base also is um, recognizing that you don't necessarily want your commercial properties to convert to residential wholesale. You know, you may be able to accommodate more mix of uses in some of your commercial areas than what you have right now, but you do want to retain and enhance the commercial areas that you have. So was there any evaluation of the cost of community services to this? Whenever you have housing, residential units, it tends to cost the town in Fiscal revenue than to the amount of taxes we gain for it. Fiscal, in, um, fiscal impact analysis um, is another project. It's not a part of the housing production plan. Um, it is something perhaps to take into consideration um, in future projects that you have. There's not necessarily um, a negative impact from residential development on the tax base. It, it varies project by project by the type of residential units that you have, by the density of residential um, units in one place. How much public infrastructure is involved and that the town will be taking ownership of, whether it's streets or sewer or water. Um, once you become the owner of either that roadway you're plowing it or the pipes you are responsible for servicing. And so it becomes, um, we tend to do it on a project by project basis because anything more general than that is um, not necessarily going to be the most accurate. I guess that's where I was going, is that you're saying at the least possible cost and building the economic base. You're talking about value and cost, but in your recommendations, are they even considering the cost? Because I think, we, went, like you said, the difference in return to the town on the investment or whatever it might be is you put a big subdivision in with like five or seven house lots that are going to sell for four hundred dollars or $500,000 the value to the town is higher for that than to put in a couple of smaller, more dense units where there's gonna be costs for education services and other services associated with that so that you're not, because you're not gonna get the tax levy on that or the tax amount because it's gonna be a low income or affordable unit, you can only tax them based on the affordable rate. So your income is gonna be much less than what you would get for tax income from uh, 600 and something thousand dollars. What we tend to find most frequently is that single family homes on relatively large lots are tend to be one of the higher costs to a town um, as opposed to uh, higher density units because you are able to accommodate more value overall in a smaller amount of space. That typically is how it works. Units more work. cost to a town, like more services go to a larger... A large single family house, again we're talking about miles of roadway, miles of pipes, we're talking about school costs because they tend to have, you know, they tend to be family housing, though we're not going to cast aspersions about school costs because that's a protected category and we love, we love children. But, um, but that notwithstanding, single family homes are generally more expensive to serve by, by a significant you know, it, it, because it's only one house on a, you know, let's say it's one acre of land and you have one house and that house is worth $400,000. Let's say instead we use that same acre and we put four houses on it, but each of those houses is then worth, let's say, $300,000. So on that same lot where we could have $400,000 of value, we could then have 12. And so that's, that's basically what happens. So then the same Use. distance of road and pipe and what a plow time and everything is now serviced by 12 on Twelve inst is, is not a, is now a, is now serviced by is now being paid for by four units instead of by one unit. 
Yeah. So even with yeah. even though affordable yeah. units are do have a reduced you know for um, capital A capital H affordable subsidized units the percentage of a project that is truly affordable mm -hmm. does have a lower assessed value on it overall again because you are because there is a, a higher intensity of use even not it doesn't have to be a high intensity use but even a marginally higher degree of use is generally going to get you a better value. So so on that acre of land then. Which which of those scenarios would give you more of those pesky children? That would, We're know, not going to talk. Required to take them, whatever they are. And actually, our I know, schools. But are, I'm just saying. Which well, generally speaking, I mean, I'll be real with you. Generally speaking, when I see multifamily being permitted, it's permitted with two bedrooms. When I see single families being permitted, I see them with four. Single family four. Yeah, four okay. bedrooms. Four bedrooms. Not, not affordable. Not, four kids. not affordable. No, we're seeing those. They build them in four bedrooms. They're 3,500 okay. square feet get listed, you know, right. depending on the community, right. between right. 550 and 850. Right. And there's no market for that, incidentally. They sit for a year. Um, Which ones? The high end, high end single family is not a market that moves that quickly. We the jumbo mortgages seven are. Here in West West. West. Seven of them in the last two years. And you got sold. another yeah. seven. Yeah, that's what I mean. Everything's gone. Yeah, your real but your real estate agents when they when they pull when they pull out the numbers for all of the things in West Boylston that are on the market and what price points they're at and how long that they're there, that's where you see that the higher end market is not the market that moves quickly. It's the two to four hundred thousand dollar range that you know that people. Yeah. Well, there's two houses on my street that went. Yeah, within a week of going yeah, to the market. Yeah, and, and that's and fundamentally that's the market that we're most trying to address. Um, you know, when it when it comes down to it, we're trying to address where we have where we don't have enough housing and where it's create. You know, those issues yeah. when you have houses that are you know gone within four days. The same people are trying. You know, there's two primary groups that are trying to buy it, whether it's seniors who are trying to downsize or first time home buyers. And these are two different buyers with very different profiles, and it's kind of a gnarly situation if you will and the only thing that we can really do is kind of impact supply and make it possible to you know try to make a little bit more in that in that end of the market I mean we're here on an affordable housing plan on a 40b housing production plan but really what we're talking about is you know what makes sense in your market and for your for your local needs and what, which way do you think the census is going? Do you think the census is going up so that we're going to more we formal? generally I mean realistically you've built units um, so the, we know that the number of units has increased. We haven't de demolished many. Yeah, we we are reasonably sure that um, that your building well, permit activity shows that you have increased units. But what the census actually reflects will. It, we're going to get a bonus. It, we're going to get 60 units. You, I, we, you have no idea because right now the census is reflecting a lower number of units than what you started in 2010 with, which we know is also not accurate. So we're, we'll yeah. see. It's two different. Yeah, the ACS is different. Right. Right. It's two different surveys. So yes, yeah, the ACS and the Desanio, but I'm I'm getting more nervous every year. It was, it was a figure in that report. I happened to notice it just popped out that the number of households went down by 500. That's the difference between. So the Desanio census that? has a different methodology from the American Community Survey. And so the, the data, the, uh, the annual updates that we have are the, annual, are the American Community Survey, ACS. So because of the sampling methodology, there's some error that they've introduced that undercounts the number of housing oh, okay. units and households. Okay. So throughout the report, we focused mostly on census data for comparability and because the census data is more reliable, okay. as well as your assessor's data is also another reliable source of data. Okay. We were working well, around a little bit the issues with the sampling errors in West Boylston in particular. They're slightly more pronounced here than we usually see, where yeah. we're actually seeing five, you know, a drop in 500 households. Seems like a large There's number. no corresponding reason as to why. If you had a military base that closed, that would possibly, you know, that would possibly explain it, but no. There's no explanation. Number of no. households yeah. make any sense to me. Right. Yeah. So the only we also have the, the, the jail and yeah. the nursing homes yes. which are, are other units, it's not households. So, right. it's, it's so the, only, um, the only reason why it was really useful to compare the 2016 ACS data to the 2010 census data was showing the change in the um, 
incarcerated population, which really has doubled between 2010 and 2016. No. Wow. So that, that was an accurate what? change, and that was um, where we... Yeah, it, I thought they were at their limit. I didn't think they could. I thought they were at 1,100. They, that um, limit, was, that was two years ago, right, that they, um, they expanded, and the population oh, right. has increased fairly significantly. And so they, the thing to keep in mind about your jail is that while, they, while the jail impacts your overall population count because they count as institutionalized persons, they do not count as households. So then if you compare the household, the population living in households, it showed a decline that, that was unexplained between the two. But the jail itself is not impacting your PKB counts or anything like that, it's, but they have to do. But it should. <laughs> well, if you want to count it as affordable housing, yes. but that's some of our. That's, I, I have to say, as a taxpayer, that's not the most affordable way we could be doing it. You like um, one of them, Mark? What? You like one of the units? Yes. <laughs> Three meals. Meals. Yeah, I know. A gym. Um, yeah. All right, we so can neither confirm nor deny the quality of their facilities either. <laughs> but uh, but we can talk about some of the implementation strategies as we're getting into um, a little bit as talking about the goals and what does that actually mean. Um, you so know, what economic development sounds nice. What does it mean? And so and this is moving kind of beyond. Okay, what are the goals? So how you know what are some of the is things? Is this that, in the document? Yes. Uh, um, so this okay. Yeah, this is <coughs> the document. Um, the so this is just kind of an overview of what has to be in the implementation plan according to the DHCD guidelines for what goes in the housing production plan. Um, Which is very helpful that they let you know what your strategies are. <laughs> <laughs> and to the uh, to DHCD strategies, we also add um, increasing technical capacity so that you can actually have the ability to do the things that um, yeah, that you're talking about. And yeah. so you have the first five, which are the DHCD special blend, and then the uh, local capacity is uh, the thing that we add to it uh, to help it make sense. All right, so uh, um, beginning with um, defining what your housing preferences are. Um, so we looked, at, looking at your needs analysis, looking at the goals, um, we determined, um, uh, we estimate, we, we, um, we concluded that um, your housing preferences are for senior housing at a variety of price points, deeper levels of affordability that is below 60% of area median income, rental housing of all sizes and price points to diversify the housing supply, small scale scattered site approach rather than putting your affordable housing only in, you know, two spots. But one spot. One yeah. spot, but mixing it around a little bit. And, um, and Does that, I mean, I guess the one thing, I like the idea of mixing it in. The trouble is we got one line where the bus goes. And right now we just put in this thing in North Main Street for affordable housing That's and true. people mm -hmm. don't really have transportation means and they're nowhere near any transportation. So how can you spread it around when we only have Route 12 line for the There's, bus? Um, Those guys have cars. Yeah, and unfortunately, there's not a there's not a requirement that affordable housing be connected with public transportation. There's an assumption living in an area like this that people are going to transit is limited. The transit is limited unless um, you have very few places that people would have walkable or transit access to um, to amenities that they would need. Shopping Basically, in the years. entire state, yeah. that would be pretty limited. <laughs> so, um, uh, so we provided an illustration of what the small-scale scattered site approach looks like. This is in another community that we've worked in. This is a 40B development that they permitted converting an, a, a historic um, two-family house into an eight-unit rental with two affordable units. Eight, eight. family units or... Uh, no, they are a mix of two and one bedroom. The affordables okay. in there are, there's a two bedroom and a one bedroom. Both are handicap accessible. So what's the square footage on that? Is that a huge building or is that? No, uh, that building, the units average in size, the one bedrooms, uh, I got a waiver for them, so they're under 800. Uh, the one bedrooms I think are 720 and the two bedrooms are 1020 to, so this would to be 1240. The size of one of our regular McMansions, just like. It's 
it's, I mean, the, you know, what's on the front is like your standard like 1870s Federalist II, and what they put on the back is comparable in size but with a shed dormer, so it's basically, um, it's basically like two, two families attached in terms of actual massing. Um, the, with the, the facade of the building that has the uh, three over three with the two in the attic, um, that's the side that faces the street. Mm -hmm. um, it was always oriented that way, and so um, that's something else to consider. Kind of, the, it's a deep site, but it's very narrow, and so for this site, it was uh, for them preferable to, um, particularly to maintain the character of the historic structure, but then also to put something in the back that um, kind of had a limited uh, impact on the actual streetscape. Where is that? This is in Medfield. Neighbors are residential. Uh, the neighbors are a mix of residential. There's single family behind it and the school. And there is a school on the right hand side and then on the left hand side is the sec uh, the developer actually owned the neighboring property and had used it for commercial but this was so successful he's doing that building now too. And so we're he's building a new old building. Yeah, he, well the, that one was a demo so he's building a, a new new building on the site of the old one and with a, an additional footprint. That one I think is 14 units so it's a little bit bigger. Um, this kind of in style. that style. Yeah, same idea. They they like their traditional New sure. England farmhouse vernacular, and that's uh, so they um, people tend to that's what their uh, what their development community is kind of designing around. So what's their I'm lot sorry, for? What size lot would you need for something like eight? This minutes? was a forty B. Um, if they were going to do it in conventional zoning in that town, it would probably take about three or four acres. Yeah, no, uh, but um, as a 40 feet, this lot I think is about 20,000 square feet. It's not a very large lot. With the 14 units? Yeah. Well, we yeah. Eight units. With eight eight units. The, this one's an 8 unit. It's got uh, 10 parking spaces. The 14 units, that site's a little bit larger. That one's. Like an acre? That one's yeah, that one's moving toward an acre. But again, they're narrow rib, they're narrow ribbon lots, and so they've got you know maybe 80 feet of frontage, but then they're about 300 feet deep. One of the concerns that the town had was tear downs in order to build deeper in the lot, and so right. um, you know when they did a housing production plan, one of the recommendations that they looked at was an incentive to preserve the building on the front of the lot if you would. Um, create affordable units to expand toward the back of the lot. Okay. Um, so this, they didn't actually pass that zoning, but this is kind of taking that idea to heart. And this project was the one that inspired them to adopt inclusionary zoning because it was successful, and they liked them since it was a friendly process. They wanted to bring it. They wanted to make friendly um, options available on their local level, so we did inclusionary. But, but both of these are 40 beats. Yep, this one is the next one's a lip project. The next one, okay. the next door, the 14 units we're doing as a lip. And so, did you look at our current? We have an inclusionary zoning. Yes, and yes, you do. As part of the uh, as part of this, is there a recommendation to evaluate that and implement it or improve it or whatever? I think my concern, quite frankly, more with your inclusionary ordinance is not um, necessarily how it's written, but more in, um, I think that it's a little bit difficult for you guys as a planning board in practice that when you're dealing with affordable units and you have developers in here before you, when you're frequently discussing the units and what units that you might get out of a project, you're being asked to do that on the floor and in open hearing and in public, and that I think is actually a very difficult position for the board to be in. And so I'm actually more concerned about um, um, the ability to. You have good things in your zoning. It's just the ability to implement it. You know, the, to actually carry to to do it. You know, to move it forward. You know, you have accessory apartments in your zoning. You have inclusionary in your zoning. You have a density bonus for affordable. You know, you have these things in there, and so it's really just about getting the word out that these exist making the minor tweaks where they need to happen. And, um, but the things are there. You know, I have questions as to why people aren't using them, but they're, they're there. <laughs> Is that something, that's what I'm thinking with this housing production plan, can we, because the way it's been told is that the building department is the point where if someone wants to do something in town, they go to the building department. Is there some way of, maybe we go to Clark or to WPI and have them look at all our zoning bylaws and come up with a little handout for our building inspector because we keep going through them. They gotta get comfortable with things. Yep. Once they get comfortable with it, they might be able to help people who are coming and proposing things in town. But that seems to be something that I would like to see more than the idea of hiring a town planner. Because whenever I see hire a town planner, it always ends up being they need to bring in development to make their own job sustainable, 
Well, the, the role that you're speaking of is that of a zoning administrator, which is frequently performed by a town planner, which is typically why we say hire a town planner. Town planners are generally the ones who adjudicate zoning, and the building commissioner is generally in charge of building and fire codes. Usually they're supposed to work very closely together, and typically in most towns the building department is the first step on the process because almost everything begins with a building permit application, whether or not that um, you know, triggers a denial letter or anything else, that really depends. Um, I cannot speak to uh, your building inspectors and their level of knowledge related to zoning and their frequency with which they get hired. Uh, it's not. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I don't even it. It just, but, but ideally, yes, got, if, if you don't have one. a town planner, then yes, you absolutely want those skills concentrated in the building department. You want them telling, you know, anybody who's interested, you know, what the, you know, what their options are and to give them a real idea of what their options are. Um, it goes a lot of ways in a lot of places. Some people are very much, they don't want to work with developers and tell them anything. Other places are just like, no, we'd actually like to do a few good things, like please come here and look at this. <laughs> and so it really depends on how, who you as a town want to be. And in respect to um, just like a technical review of your zoning, that's um, typical, you know, that's something that people do a lot of different ways, but um, you have, uh, one option would be town council to review it to contract litigate your legal services. You can also look for planners to do it. There's a number of ways to do yeah, that. You know, I wasn't looking at checking yeah, out zoning. It's more than zoning. Yeah. Well, uh, that you that's there's a couple ways to skin that cat too. Your regional might be willing to help you. Um, you know, we as consultants, um, you know, that's something that I do. Um, but you know, you know, that's again, there's a couple of ways to do that. But it does seem that that's a reasonable way to approach it. That with action of a town planner, that really does need to be concentrated in the building department. Whether or not they want to do that is not something that I can. <laughs> yeah, but if we can hope. We make it easier for them. That's yes. the point. And if Making that's it what easy. you're talking about implementation, that would really help because I don't know that we're going to go anywhere. It is not uncommon in towns that have limited staff for them to do um, do permitting books, uh, whether it's the greatest hits of what's in the bylaw, mm -hmm. whether it's design standards, whether it's um, what I see most frequently is actually a town wide effort of like. A two, like how who do you go to for what you know if you're going to start a business like you know do you need to go to the board of health do you need to go to building do you need you know who do you need permits from and so Wait, we see that happen this? a lot yeah people do and yes it's not like the phone book it, yeah no there's no this is not it doesn't need to be like rocket science you can actually you know um it, i'm not going to say you need a consultant to do it i'm just saying you need somebody who is interested in zoning and understands it to put together our greatest hits and that's something that's fairly it's not good town has a good one uh, yeah. Concord's always issuing RFPs for these, and so if you want to see like a super done up version or like super done up guides, look at Concord. Professionally well done. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, if you want to see like people who are spending the most money possible on doing that, I would say Concord. Yeah, well, <laughs> not Concord though. Yeah. Right. Just nice for a reason, not an accident. <laughs> but but they they do like their permitting guidebooks, um, and I do think that something like that may be helpful because you do have some decent regulations and it doesn't seem that it's very well known. We did interviews where people said, oh, you know, accessory apartments would be cool if we could get a bylaw for that. And then I saw that it was adopted in 2006. And, yeah. so, and so it's just, your bylaws have a lack of PR to a certain extent. Well, right. <laughs> right. Good PR. Yeah. Yeah. Good PR. Yeah. Good PR. And so, no, we always get bad stuff. Like, well, oh, that's that's so board. terrible. That's just the planning board stuff. <laughs> yeah. 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 But uh, and so with that in mind, if you're talking about the housing preferences, I didn't hear anybody say that they wanted another 200 unit apartment building. Um, we did hear people say that they did have a hard time finding rental housing. When we did a survey, Roberta found a house. What? Yeah. One. There was some, one, uh, one house for rent, uh, so it is a little difficult. Um, as a divorced person, I always talk about like, you don't know when you're going to need to rent sometimes, <laughs> but things happen. You might not want to have to pull your kids out of school when they do. Um, and so, uh, so we do try to be sensitive to the fact that people are people and they live life. So it's not just that these are buildings, but these are buildings that have, you know, a whole, that have a living and breathing purpose. And, um, and so again, we talk about what fits in in West Boylston. I had a great time with the vet, the old vet down the street, um, and what that could be like demoed and redone as that oh, would look right. like yeah, yeah, very yeah. similar, yeah. but like Do just a minor change. Skip forward two yes. slides. All right, Roberta's, we'll Roberta's wrangling me in. Okay, there we go. Well, oh. Yeah, well, because <laughs> this is what you 
want to talk about. Yeah, so we'll talk about zoning amendments first, and then we'll go back to sites. Um, we know that you guys have been bandying about village center zoning. That, of course, came up in interviews. The idea of mixed use, um, how that actually gets orchestrated, is always um, that varies by place. Um, the I think the one that I've most recently written is West Westminster's Village Center bylaw, where they were interested in getting a little bit more residential in there and trying to get, um, frankly, a little more, a few more restaurants. <laughs> a little more what? A few more restaurants. restaurants. So they wanted right? they wanted more there there in their downtown because yeah, they, yeah. it's cute, it's walkable, but the, it does um, a few more things would make it more of a draw. Yeah, I think we have Dairy Queen, so that's good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> It's walkable. It's walkable. Yeah. Driving yeah. stuff, but walking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're not meant to drive to the D2. There's never enough parking at those. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll recognize that the top four images are, are familiar sites in town. The oh, bottom yeah. two images are ideas we have that represent what we're talking about in a possible. Um, so the bottom right is definitely my vision for your your event. Your, your I event liked thing. that picture. That's yeah, I like that because I, I the second yeah. I drove by that I instantly was just like that would look right as a farmhouse with an L. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. that's like yeah. right next to my house. Yeah. 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 That's, that's the neck of the woods. That's so. my. That's my area. And, and so, yeah. unfortunately, yeah. though, right now we can't build that. And so, in order to do that, we had some thoughts either uh, via like an underutilized uh, commercial sites bylaw because you do have a couple of these hanging out with large seas of pavement and maybe some mixed use versions. Uh, this is Bedford, right? Yeah. Bedford, in the corner is Bedford. Um, and one of their stabs that they've taken at a mix of residential and retail that's located along a major commercial strip. Um, we're not saying that this is something that you absolutely have to do, but when you look at kind of the middle photo where you have, um, you know, these two. Where is that? Oh, that's the old. Cedos. Cedos. Yeah. Yeah. Cedos. yeah. And so, you know, where it's just like that. It's not exactly something that you look at and say, this is our land doing as much as possible as it could uh, for yeah. us. It's like, welcome to West Boylston. Yes. And so, and I'm not, I'm, and I'm not here to shade, I'm not here to shade anybody about this, but uh, the thing that we did want to, want to do is just kind of encourage the idea of looking around where West, we're not encouraging any new development on anything that hasn't been developed prior because you don't have the land, you don't, and that's just not going to work. And in a place like West Boylston, it really behoves you more to look at what you have that people have built on and figure out whether or not that's as good as it can be. Yeah. And um, and so we did we did look at potential zoning amendments to kind of address that issue. Again, we're not necessarily looking at just straight, you know, what's going to get us affordable housing, but look at what might actually sincerely be opportunities for you. So you said on the veterinary center that yeah. you wouldn't be able to do the change that you you'd be. I don't for. think you could do it because I don't think um, you could get enough density to be able to do the uh, with the lot size to be able to do enough units to. Um, I don't make it feasible. Make it feasible. Really? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not 100 percent certain how big the site is exactly, but um, the multifamily requirements are pretty are pretty high um, in terms of lot size, and so I don't think that it could be done. Because right now you're maxing out at four units an acre. Four to six. It's four, and so where it's allowed. Um, and I'm not 100% clear if, I think that this is in the, um, the, the um, this is in a district that does allow the residential, because you have that overlay yes. that runs down your, down your commercial corridors. Yep. And, uh, and so it, I, I think per use it could do it, I just don't think it has the density. And so um, some mechanism for these conversions where you have, um, where you have a site that really would be appropriate, um, as some special permit kind of situation that would give you guys the ability to review it and give somebody the ability to actually do something with that. Yeah, that that could be a nice taxable asset. <laughs> yeah, and look really nice there yeah. too. And the, top right, like right and the top right property I always bring up with village zoning, you know? Yeah. Because, because that, where is that? I can't figure it out. That's the back of Honey Farms. Yeah, it's right, 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 right down the street. Where, that's where Cumbies wanted to put up their monstrosity. Yeah. And that's not a good Cumbie site. People, people, no, it's not. People no. come out with, with, oh with, with torches. Oh, I believe. said no. They and then, it in the right place. then they put it in a better place. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's usually spot. that's usually what happens after the torches start burning. Yeah, exactly. but, <laughs> but this site is a bit of an enigma. It's listed at almost six hundred thousand dollars. It's been listed for quite a while. A long time. There's, um, you know, it's three car garage. Yeah, that three car garage is spectacular. The structure is spectacular. Yeah. The the structure is you know it's it's a it's site. Iffy. It's, it's iffy. 
The structure is iffy, and it, it's again like, what are you going to get out of that? Maybe two units, right? And so, I mean, I, I'm not going to say I, I'm hoping that there are no people who are have strong feelings about this building from a preservation perspective, but this one might be a good demo for a different project, <laughs> you know. But that's that's just me, you know, talking outside the box. But I hate to lose old houses, but I'm not sure that's a. That one, it's when they're, you know, it's one of these things where it's a situation where the opportunity might outweigh the preservation mm -hmm. benefit, but at the same time, I have not done any research on this house. I don't know if George Washington parked a horse here or anything like that, um, and, you know, those in, without proper documentation, I could, you know, there's not a lot I can say about it, but I will say that. I can interrupt for one second. Is there something the board needs me here for? We always need you here. I know. Um, before I go in five minutes. Do you have any burning comments, anything that you're upset about in here or that you think we should have addressed or that you think is fine or? <laughs> no, I was impressed. I was impressed by the report, actually. I did not read every word, but I certainly mm -hmm. skimmed it all. I, uh, I read every other word. Very other confusing other word. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, you took all the verbs out. Yeah, yeah. It's tough to read. <laughs> the only read adjectives was terrific. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, all right. Absent of that, then, I, I suppose. So, I, just I guess I have a general question. Yes. Who sees this document? DHCD. That's it? We send this to DHCD. Well, it's available on the website. Yeah. yeah. Right. But this right. is basically a love letter that, we're, that we write to DHCD. Okay. 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 And it, is, it comes on file with them, um, and so it's available as you are a town with an approved housing production plan, which makes you eligible for safe target or safe harbor. Um, but that's ultimately okay. where this goes okay. to live. All right. It's it's their that's plan. A, <laughs> yeah. And so when you work this out, there's some, if I remember back from five or eight years ago, there's some a half of a percent that each year you have to make progress. Is that if, if what you, you propose? If you make progress of a half a percent, and so that would be. Um, <coughs> oh, that's not actually on this table. Is yeah, it? no, I didn't, and I, I don't have the number in my head. I didn't put it anywhere in the, in the presentation. Yes, <laughs> the short answer. The target yes. is in the report, and I don't have the, the number in my mind right now. It might be something like 17 units a year was your target. That's the. Yeah, it used to be 14, so that sounds right. Yeah, maybe yeah. 14 yeah. units a year. So, so maybe it goes from 14 to 15 or something like that. Um, anyway, so if you have this approved housing production plan and you build, say, 14 units in one calendar year, then you, you have permit. Let's modify that. Permit. You permit, not build. Well, it depends. It depends on how it how it gets approved. But if it's a 40B, you would you would approve the the 140B or however many 40B permits it requires to get to 14 additional subsidized housing unit um, per year. Per year in in one calendar year, then you get a reprieve from unfriendly 40Bs for the following year. Uh. So if you meet your target, you are put in what's called safe harbor, which gives the town local control back with 40B applications, mm -hmm. should you not be found to meet the land area minimum. So we should meet that now, right? Because of uh, 92 North Main Street? Uh, that you have enough? to have the housing production plan approved by DHCD first, then build well, the we units. Do we do have one. We have an approved no, Is it still in, I forget I how old it is. I don't think it's five years old. Is it five years old? Uh, nine, it's two, almost five years old. I wrote it. Okay. Then if it's still a valid housing production plan, yeah, yeah you can request housing certification. I, mean, based I don't on think that. we're doing anything. Um, There's no 40 Bs coming it through. Wouldn't be, it wouldn't be the planning board, it'd be the zoning board. It's CB. But, but, but it would, um, trust, wouldn't it? Paula maintains her SHI. Yes. I'll look to cut to yeah. the chase. Paula, mm -hmm. Paula Stewart maintains yep. it. And so she would do it for either the ZBA yeah. or so, the Yeah, in either direction, yeah. I, we can, um, while Roberta and I have not personally been doing that at COG, I can say that our colleague Paula, who also works for, for housing services, is the one who yep. does that and for that, you guys. <laughs> that one year reprieve is from the time that the units first became eligible, which for 40B development would be when it's approved. So that project was just completed, but it was approved more than a year ago. So it was approved, would, what, 15, 15 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> that opens a different can of worms. <laughs> and if you fail to meet that 15-unit target, there's no consequence. It's then just... Then close down this No consequence. You're still it fine. Just, it, it, it just means that you're still... 
you know, in the, in the position it. that you are right now, no change. No. Um, so we still have the, the one target makes you eligible to regain local control. Which um, we think we already have. Which, which you think you already have. have. Yeah. Which we will neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> but that's written in this, though. Yes, yes. we acknowledge. Yeah, yeah, we we <laughs> fully you, acknowledge it. You, um, bold, you take some bold statement, bold positions here. Neither <laughs> confirm nor deny. <laughs> well, that's because we don't have the authority right. to. Right. And so DHCD, they just changed their regulations for around one point five. Yes. So, because there's new um, new provisions now. Yes, they updated since the guidance. Yeah. Um, yes. Since since the last within the last couple of months. Since yeah, since the last one that you guys had was right. done, it's been updated. There was further okay. clarification. Once since then? Yeah, there's further clarification given um, for issues like private roads, not public roads, and things like that. That. Um, Actually, Nantucket contacted us, and I gave him the information. Uh, all that stuff that Paul Why am I not surprised that Nantucket contacted you? No, Nant Nantucket is getting in touch about their affordable housing. They're like, Nantucket is affordable housing? That's where they get affordable housing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We've had probably four or five times. Well, they also also are having the same problem that they their workers have no place to work. Oh, yeah, right. so it, it's a bigger problem than you might think. Uh, going back to our task at hand, one of the things the state does ask is for appropriate sites for affordable housing. Uh, the one that we definitely focused on, of course, is going to be the 87 Maple Street expansion. Um, whether that gets permitted by 40B or not, uh, we're putting that in as your town owned 40B opportunity, and we're going to neither confirm nor deny whether or not you should do it under local zoning or you guys are working that out. And so we're putting that in there because that's the logical thing to put to put with the state's box. Okay. So the and they know about it too. I mean, they, they yeah. give us the hand. And yeah, it. and so um, the other opportunities that we saw that were town-owned because they want you to look at both uh, town-owned properties and then privately um, private opportunities. Uh, the only other town-owned opportunities you have are is the land that's on Paul X Hyman Drive which is zone conservation and most likely to be used for recreation, I'm given to understand. So um, that is a potential opportunity area for affordable housing. Whether or not it's likely um, is another story. It's next to the jail. Well, that's yeah, yeah, well, you know, it might be a great site for transitional housing. And actually Come right out and go across the street. Well, <laughs> oh, that's, and it's that's something that we need to consider about yeah. rezoning, because it was always just zone conservation because it's the jail and the county land was always the conservation land which made no sense at all but that's what it has been since 1970 something which hmm. doesn't make any sense to me so if we want to try to do something with that it would make sense to include it into this housing production yes. plan as the property because it, it would be great to have something there build in some amenities you've got the uh, you got all the senior housing across the way, Angel Brook, Hillside Village. We had talked about trying to do a walking path okay. kind of in the area to give people a safe place to, walk. to, to kind of move around yeah. and go. So when they, when they Except for the train. But when they were well, swooping. you gotta watch the train, right? And the swooping but, there. So that's something. Yeah, that there's work. you know yeah. the town does not own a huge amount of land that is it doesn't have a huge amount of surplus land and um, we you know we fully acknowledge that there are competing interests whether it's recreation whether it's cemetery whether it's affordable housing that there are probably a number of people who are in line for this land should something happen with it but nevertheless it is um, it is not um, most of it is not encumbered by DCR. You know, when you actually look on the map, it's not terribly wet. I'm given to understand that it has some steep slope on it, but it is not the worst land that you have by any stretch of the imagination, and so there might be some opportunity there. Um, other sites that we always like to talk about are your fraternal organizations. Um, your VFW has been closed for some time. You still have the Odd Fellows um, and a few others there. Which is the one over by? We get the Masons, the Odd Fellows. There's the Legion. Our, um, our American Legion. Oh, it's a Legion. Excuse, I get the Legion at the VFW. Well, the, the VFW is now Demolished. trailer sales. Yes. Oh, is that what? Okay, but the, Never, then the Legion's are open. Yes. So you have right now. You have three operating between okay. the Legion, the Masons, and the Odd Fellows. Um, okay. Two of them have pretty nice looking halls. Um, but in any event, um, now and again, when those organizations, um, they're kind of aging social organizations and. We do see them downsizing and consolidating um, quite a bit, and so there can be opportunities as they have surplus land available that they tend to be actually pretty good partners for affordable housing. Um, so we see we see opportunities there sometimes. Uh, we talked about the conversions of um, 
existing uh, multi, or no, this is actually something separate, uh, conversions of existing multifamily or condos to affordable units. So this is taking market rate units and converting them to affordable units. Uh, this is done either by purchasing a deed restriction or subsidizing a buyer who will deed restrict a property. This is kind of two ways to do it. Um, but that's another way to get some additional units on, especially again, talking about scattered site where we're not looking at building 100 at one time, but you have a couple of con or a town or condo developments in West Boylston where the units sell for relatively inexpensive prices that um, at market rate are sufficient for affordable housing. And so there might be some opportunity to pick up units there, or pick up deed restrictions and do it that way. Do you have those mapped or listed? Uh, I have a map of your existing multifamily housing uh, where the lots are in use of multifamily but I can not can uh, but based on that information I can't necessarily say whether or not that would be a good site yeah okay I'm just um, thinking so we have the guidance of where we're going because some yeah. I keep hearing that there's going to be another proposed development coming in off whatever street mm -hmm. if it were on the list here we would say oh well yeah let's pay attention and one of the things, too, we've talked a little bit with some of the trust members about, particularly because they have realtors on the trust, um, that monitoring uh, these, um, you know, just monitoring the market and also um, creating some criteria in advance for if the town did want to exercise that option to pick up deed restrictions, what type of units they, what they would they actually be looking for. Um, so not just like every time something hits the market, you know, have a town be like, oh yeah, maybe this one, until somebody says, no, not that one, that one. And so um, try to make it a little less, you know, right. um, but also to make sure that the financial resources are, right. and are also in place for the town to be able to exercise this. Whether or not you choose to do that or if you choose to conserve resources to facilitate 87 Maple Street is a real decision to make. Um, yeah. Because you, you know the amount of resources are finite, and so if the affordable housing trust put you know gets their strategy together, these are things that they can consider. We're not going to obligate anybody one way or the other. We're just right. you know here to give you the menu of you know some of the things that are on the menu of options. Um, but I also do want to you know be pretty clear that the 87 Maple Street expansion is a big project, and that will take some that it, and it's likely to take some resources too. So it's um, it is. It is. <laughs> it, it is. is. No, I mean, it's already taking me. <laughs> it is. It's true. And so, I, and so I do want to be cognizant of that, but we also want to talk about some of these, um, you know, smaller scale options on how to, how to chip away at it, too. Mm -hmm. uh, you, so, you mentioned purchasing a deed restriction. Mm -hmm. Is that to go to somebody who just lives in their house and saying, we will, if you will put there your deed restriction in, we'll There are a couple of ways to approach it. Um, typically, it's a little easier with rental housing to, afford, to approach a landlord and say, hey, yeah. if you'd be willing to put a restriction on and provide, you know, 5% of your units as affordable um, and, put, you know, place a 35-year um, deed restriction, we'd be happy to give you X amount of money, perhaps, or, you know, would you give some other situation. Would you, would you lower their assessment or something so they pay less taxes or something? Their assessment would be lowered once the units became affordable because that would impact the valuation. So it would lower it marginally. It's just not enough? So oh, it would it lower may, it marginally. It may actually not have an impact on the assessment because mm -hmm. if it's a lower quality rental development that's in need of substantial rehabilitation, oh, well, yeah. you give them the money for the rehabilitation, they put the deed restriction on, and they're really going to be collecting the same rents that they are now, but in a better quality building that gets you the SHI. Yeah. So okay. ultimately, it's not a net change other than having that low, that low rent building actually count toward the SHI that right now does not. There are a variety of ways to pursue it. I think that would be whether you are targeting buildings or landowners directly, whether it's just as opportunity, you know, maybe uh, particularly in small towns, generally a lot of things are family owned and um, people know what's going on in the family. So if something might be changing, you know, that mom and dad are getting ready to move to Arizona or something like that. Uh, anecdotally, we all know that these things happen. And so that's, um, I hate to say that that's how some of this operates, but it is how some of it operates is um, having the people who are actually, you know, in town um, who are actively working on um, town issues who can see Need these things, these things yeah. and to develop the leadership and the capacity to actually pursue opportunities. Oh, Most sure. of the time we're just reacting, but now and again we get to, we get to act. Well, it's on, how do we help the housing trust do that? Or whoever is the group, are we hiring someone to be paying attention to this? Because so much stuff goes right by. You have yeah. someone. Yeah. Have but is that part of what yeah. she's doing? Is yes. That, well, not we have the real estate agent who's sort of paying attention in town. You, you, yeah. So, 
Paul is our coach. One of the things that the housing that the housing trust would need is more sustained funding than it has right now. Right now, the housing trust makes a request for funding annually that essentially yeah. is just paying for that technical support person. Right. Um, but if you were to, you know, want to finance uh, purchasing deed restrictions or a, right. you know, home, then, so then it would, have some budget. and, and the, the funds would need to be there already because these transactions need to right. happen. We had talked about that, of yeah. taking the, um, uh, what's, what's the pool of money? The CPA. CPA. CPA, and, CPA and, and taking yeah. our whole thing our whole affordable housing piece and putting it in, into an a, account controlled by the affordable housing trust so that it's liquid for us. That makes sense. Yeah. But yeah. You just have to ask for it though. I mean, that's... I know, but I wouldn't need Because we haven't needed to or haven't had the strategy. It, it does help if you're going to ask obtain them. funds in the affordable housing trust to have a plan showing what you would do with those funds. Yes. So, you know, this is the kernel of that plan, but it could perhaps be expanded on to show mm -hmm. Um, you know, kind of what your business plan is for how you're going to use the funding. And Paul has helped us get another fifteen thousand dollars from, or is it nine thousand? Something like that from a, a renter in an affordable, who they bought it and then they moved out and rented their affordable unit, and we recovered all those rents. And we and so she did help pay her way. Nineteen thousand. <laughs> Was it nineteen thousand? Nineteen thousand. And so a lot of what Paula has been involved in is more of the technical stuff, especially with respect to the expansion at 87 Maple Street, but um, the Housing Trust does have technical assistance. Um, that is, um, they have some capacity, but again, it's like Roberta says, it's kind of, you have capacity to run things as they are currently. The issue is whether or not you need to do more is how to uh, you know, address those. Um. Did you have something yeah. to bring up? When you talked about getting, um, deed restrictions from homeowners and stuff. Doesn't that all have to be approved by DACD? Yes. And don't they have to meet the... The, the units would need to be marketed in accordance with a fair housing and tenant marketing plan and lottery selection. Um, so the same process for affordable housing for the marketing of the units and the tenanting of the units would need to happen. So would that, would the owner, so if, so if someone owned a house, you know, and they wanted to and we, the town went to them and said, you know, do the deed restriction, blah, blah, blah. They, would, the, would the homeowner, would they be responsible for taking care of all of that information? The, generally speaking, it would really depend on how the, who owns the restriction in the, in the deed to begin with. But yes, usually it would be the homeowner um, that would be responsible for doing the lottery and the marketing plan which is why we don't typically recommend this at, you know, what is kind of why we're saying of approach landlords and people who have large, because that's, that's fairly onerous on a single family homeowner. It's why we don't talk about doing um, accessory units as SHI eligible units, because again, the homeowner would need to go through that process to run out the units. And it's difficult. And I, to be honest, it's just a difficult thing for an average homeowner to carry out, and so what we try to do is approach it on a large, if you are going to do that, do it on a larger scale or have a coordinated program so that the town is the one that has the oversight over and is making sure that it does occur. But again, that requires... The town or a town contract, somebody like you to do? Uh, it really depends. Um, it, you know, you could yeah, contract you or you could... It, it, however the town decides to okay. I expand capacity, the bottom line is that some some expansion would need to be, would need to happen. So where are you where there's the potential to um, assist individual homeowners or home buyers, the lottery would have to happen first through which the person is selected and then you, you provide the subsidy that might um, rehabilitate the house or help them to be able to afford the purchase price in exchange for a deed restriction. But the lottery has to happen at, at, at some point before the funding is um, offered. For the single, so that so at that point, the single families we tend to see the subsidy running with a person who is buying, as opposed to approaching the homeowner um, who is selling. And so the, there's so there's are, ways to do it. <laughs> what what are we trying to do tonight? Uh, tonight we just want you to accept the plan, and um, and bless it. We want you to take a vote on accepting it so that uh, we can move forward to the board of selectmen and have this submitted to DHCD in the next. Uh, I like this chair, so something by, else can By be. October 17th is the, uh, ZP, is the Board of Selectmen, so we're hoping by the end of the month they have this submitted. And 
all signed up for. How long will it take DACD to approve this? DACD, I believe, has a 90-day uh, review period. It typically moves much quicker than that. I think we usually get comments back in about a month. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, uh, they've, it, it, it hasn't happened in a long time that they've actually pushed back on anything in the plan that we've written. Yeah, yeah there's... They may have comments at this point. It's not that typical, but they may, and if they do, I will simply make the re make the revisions and submit to the state. So that the only reason I'm asking is because we're getting into close to the holidays. Yes. Mm -hmm. you know. Yes, you should have that approval prior to the holidays. I, I, I think it is. I think it is entirely possible. I've been getting things through somewhat quickly lately. <laughs> is there some grant limitation to when it has to be done? Or? Uh, the funding source for the actual housing production plan was a grant, so there's a finite timeline on us finishing your actual your, your actual plan. Um, but in terms of like your submission timeline, um, there isn't. There isn't. Well, and your support during that. Like if the state has yeah. questions. Oh yeah, I mean we're, yes, As if the state has questions, comments, anything like that, of course we take care of it. And so right. um, we are, um, basically we're with you until you have a successful plan, yeah. <laughs> do you guys, right. do, you, do you show any kind of guidance, like because we're such a small community and 54% of the, this town, the land in this town is owned by either DCR or the, the prison, People that have just empty lots, you know, have empty lots. How how do we get them to try to, you know, either develop the land or sell the land to a developer, you know, to increase? Apparently, you give them an A and R and they clear it, like the other <laughs> the day. next day, right? right? The next day, the next morning, they will clear it. Oh. No, I, I, I hope they filed that first at the registry. <laughs> No, they cleared. They, they jumped on all. There's a forest. Well, yeah. The corner of their house, and the trees were gone the next day. Yeah. They put the sale sign next. Yeah. Right. That's. But it was their land. I mean, it's their land. Yeah. It's not that they did anything wrong. <laughs> yeah. No, they they just got it ready. For so them. is there is there a way to approach? There. Um. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of ways to figure out um who it is Which that is you is might want to approach. Motion. Whether it's people yeah, who own um currently empty or underutilized right. property. Um, it really, it kind of really depends on what your prior, what you guys decide your priorities are. If you decide that um, you really want to look at some of the, like your more tired commercial scripts and look at like infill opportunities there, then you're going to target it over there. If you want to look at you know large, um, you know some of your um, antiques that are maybe in kind of shambly conditions that might be um, you know good for. Uh, you know, good for an interior retrofit for to turn it into three and seven what is, one. What are some of the some what, of the things that that the town could offer somebody to do something like to that? actually incentivize it? Typically, just giving permission is enough. I, I know that sounds like kind of a flip response, but for most developers, the thing that they're looking for is surety and permitting. They want to know what it is that they can build and that they can build it. And so establishing an environment where they have adequate support to move things through permitting and that it's clear to them what can happen, you generally will see a response. So you can use a PR on the different bylaws. They could but in and then there are other things, like there are some things that you can't control for. There are a lot of property owners who, in spite of the fact, may not be utilizing their land well, might also find the idea of selling it for development purposes to be absolutely reprehensible. Because there so is a nice piece of property <laughs> to like to see get developed. Do you know who owns it? Oh, yeah. Do you know what their story is? Oh, yeah. You ever knock on their door? <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Okay. <laughs> There's always a story as to why, but in terms, you know, is there criteria? Um, if it were me that were trying to figure it out, I, I would say that it would not be something that I would apply like a one-size-fits-all set of criteria. I'd work really hard with you guys to figure out what ex where there's good consensus on what the priority would be and then figure out something that you, you know, get it down to a list of five so that you can tackle it. You see, the problem mm -hmm. is that on 40B projects, you know, it's the ZBAs, you know, it's the coup de bras. You know, they're the ones that act as the planning board. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's kind of hard because a lot of us have never had, you know, have never had the done site plan reviews. We have to depend on. Dave, I want to, I want to get the, the meeting done. Okay. <laughs> um, do you want to approve well, this tonight, or do you want to do more editing? I we haven't read it through. I, like I said, I got a whole bunch of other stuff, so I, I could probably, I would have it done for the next meeting, but I don't have it now. Okay. I'd so I could, I would abstain either way. I wouldn't be against it, but it sounds like everything's there, but I don't know. Okay. Anybody else? Have input? I thought it was good. I can't say I've read every word either, but 
Is it too late for next meeting? We would very much appreciate a vote tonight because we are scheduled at the selectman next, next, next Thursday. Thursday. So okay. we are up, we are at the selectman on the seventeenth. So we would hope that you are comfortable based on the um, your ability to skim and the uh, content of our presentation tonight that you are comphorable enough to send this forward to your CD. Okay. Is anybody is anybody CD. at it's all comfortable with this? I am. Um, you have have you read this? No, but I'm still comfortable. Say, is it is it a right? <laughs> has he read it? No, but he's comfortable. No, he's comfortable. comfortable with it. I, I'm also comfortable with it. Okay, and, and you've got three. I got three. We get a motion. So yeah, one of one of the <laughs> yeah move to approve the housing production plan. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank right, you so very much. <laughs> I stay. Good job. All right, next. Thank you for coming in. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. All right. Thank you for giving us a vote. <laughs> See what happens whenever you make me chair? <laughs> we need all the ANRs to come through. I'm making you the king of the, of the click Thank chair, you. too. There you go. All right. Uh, okay, a little, little joining update. I'm going to keep going. Oh, what is that? I don't know. Oh, Village zoning update. Yeah, how'd it go? Village center zoning update. We gave them some feedback, and we're waiting for more information. It's, I don't know. It's it's, uh, it's the same I as what happened last think, time. I think you know. If you ask me, you know, I don't think some people likes it. No, I'm much. getting. I'm getting. A, Certainly a bad vibe, but I don't know if that means that yeah. it's over. I just think that I'm not sure it's the people who live there that right. are doing it. The people that were making comments live so outside. So then, in that which case, you know, okay. so so then in that case, you know, we should be sending a uh, mail. Exactly. So talk to the people yeah. and then ask the people to come. Well, in. but I think this these initial meetings are good because we needed to whack out a whole who lot of the people of stuff. came in. They are the people who ever lives there, right? I don't. The people one, that one, the people one, that I knew there. Mm -hmm. That they were outside the zone, outside the zone, which so, is fine, and they yeah. have the right to say whatever they want to say. But the idea is that I think, I think a lot of their so things. So then, in that case, now, so instead of there, instead of yeah. instead of it's having the with me, okay. yeah, unfortunately, instead of having this many meetings, you know, even uh, if the planning board has to spend some money by mailer, I would be comfortable in uh, sending them. How does the board even send all that stuff home? But we need to get. I wanted to no, get a final. A planning, but it's not a select board issue. No, no, I'm asking. I get something from the select board all the time that just says resident, and it doesn't have postage on it. How do you send those things out? Ah, uh, you need to talk to Nancy, I guess. You know, so okay. this, those are all. Spend money if we do it that way. And I think it costs the town money. I think it still costs town money, but it's a reduced rate. Reduced. I don't know. Then you got to print them. But yeah. to get back to the village center yeah. issues is we've asked for revised bylaws to address the concerns with the higher density stuff that we didn't want, to address the limits and the locations. We're still waiting to see what the we use is. Yeah, so we need to get all that stuff and also in the, advance of the meetings. So and also the single family, multifamily, and the uses, businesses. Right. The so those what things are existing people, uses. Yeah. So we, we need that, that to evaluate it, not just to present it to people and right. get people's thoughts. We need to get no, no, something, some point we gotta make work something. on it ourselves, yeah. and then come up with a reasonable thing that we think, listening to what we've heard well, three times already. CMRPC has given us something to start with, don't they? Yeah, they gonna five stories draft? high and... No, no, the draft they were gonna... I, I remember the last right? one, she was gonna come up with a, um, some language that you could use so that people could modify, like it was Chevalier's building. He could do something with that building and not have to all of a sudden because he's putting residential in there, have to change his parking to something he can't fit on the property anymore. Do some some language that allows him to use the structure the way it is, and put in residential. Do do some work on it, things like that. Yeah, but that the, you know, that's fit, a, but maybe yeah, don't conform to some. But there was a comment on that. You know, so if you are taking building by building, that's the process of a special permit variance. Go get it. I don't, I don't think that why well, well, people were saying it's not a variance. I don't think it's a variance. Permit. I think it's. We could do no, it as, but that's what we do. We, we can change our business zone in those two little areas mm -hmm. to be 
village center zones, one here and one here. The wording that we make those is what we need. We have to get that from CMRPC, or we have to get their feedback, or we draft it ourselves, or whatever it is. But right now, I'm expecting to get it from CMRPC. Then there's the issue of all the areas between <coughs> those two blobs of business. Right, of we business. could just leave like that. We could leave them as general residents, but there are a couple in there that want to be business. Business, yep. So that, do we consider those and just make those blobs bigger and then leave everything else general residents? We have to decide what we want to do. We don't just keep putting it out to the public and saying, well, what do you think? Well, what do you think? So far, we've had four public forums. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, the same thing. At, yeah, at the same time, if it goes to the town meeting, uh, majority of the people, they don't live that area. So majority of the people who are will, will be voting, if it is a zoning, a two-third, will be the people who live out of that area. They don't care. Vote yes. Yeah, but they're going to vote by whatever the pe if the people that are living there stand up at town meeting and say, so I'm not, we don't want I don't this. like this. This right. is not good. I'm living here. Yeah. I don't want to deal with it. The people in town meeting and say, I'm not voting for it. I wouldn't want it forced down my throat. Even though yeah, I'm but as long as I'm not affected, I will vote yes. Right? No, it just depends no. how the discussion goes. No, the people will hear what the, a lot of them, I think, mm. from what I've had in the past is if when the people hear dissension of the people who are impacted, they'll consider it and not always just vote because it doesn't, it's not in their backyard. It's not. Yeah, but one of those. this need to be, you know, we need to, we, we sh as you said, you know, we shouldn't be keep on having meeting, meeting and dragging the people here. Yeah. So that should be an end for this. Yes. No, we can stop having meetings. I think we should keep using CMRPC's help if they'll do it. Yeah, but how long they're right, going to do it for free? You know? No, they're not doing it for free. They got a great. This right is now. free. Well, but it's how, long? Nice. how long? How long? So I think for us, what I'd like maybe we do it at our next meeting. Ask them to have something to us at our next meeting, and if they, I don't know what their time frame is, but if it's not available at the next meeting, the then we yeah. schedule it for the December meeting. Yeah. Or wait a minute, November, the November meeting. We only have one. Oh, I think they are coming for November meeting. Right. I don't. I thought they were scheduling for the next public hearing or the next public forum, which was. I was going to ask you when that is. Village Here's zoning is November 26. November 26. November 26. November 26. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah, that's gotta be. That's the week after. Thanksgiving. We got oh, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. It's like okay. the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Is, yeah. Thanksgiving yeah. is November 22nd. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. we You're thought right. about that at the meeting. You're right. Monday. Um, so that's when we were going to have another public forum. But do yeah. we need to have a public forum? I mean, we need to have it as a public meeting. But well, why not just make it a working session and really just get down to come up with something that we want yeah. and then either do it or don't do it. Agreed. Okay. I mean, we'll keep that date and have them come to us, but not necessarily post it as a public one. Not, I mean, not post it as a work session that invites... <coughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think the people who are interested will still well, come I mean, in and that'll be great, we'll get the meeting, feedback. But, I mean, but it's going to be more, so, we want to get something a week at least in advance from the CMRPC to put on the town's website right. so that people can actually have something and make comments on, not show up at a meeting and then see an, a map. Right. Show us what's possible. What I, I mean, I, I obviously wasn't there for either of the public hearings that we've had so far, but that what I've been hearing is that people don't, they don't understand the purpose they don't like they're not getting why why what's the problem that we're trying to solve by well they addressing this right and is that was that still yes. what was yeah, going and that's on? what in cmrpc is going to come up with we're trying to cram something onto them that they don't want right well and they, because well, they, don't they don't understand don't they're, they're not seeing a problem like they don't see they're not seeing a problem so well, why, why are you doing they this? they don't see right? the problem but then they'll say the problem they'll say this used to be like this 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 and this and this and we and it was nice and so we say, yes, exactly. That's what we're trying to preserve and get back to. Okay. So I think, <laughs> but it I never think somehow connects. whatever, like, what the material, like, how the materials are presented the week before, we need to clearly reflect that, right? Right. Um, well, that's the problem with writing a bylaw. A bylaw right, don't bylaws, so you can't that. Like anything, yeah. Right. It's like, it, like, it needs to be, there needs to be, like, a plain language cover sheet, right? That's like. Executive summary. Yes. Yes, exactly. 
A neighborly <laughs> summary. So you would write this executive summary. I'm not going to write anything ever. Anybody, just everybody understand this. Right, like that. I mean, even like the pr presentation that they just did. Well, yeah. you know, there's like 55, 60 pages things. in the housing production plan, but that yeah, just still went all nicely and got the point across, right? And like that's that's what, yeah. what we need. Right. Uh, I mean, I, I agree. I, right? Because then they can decide better if they want it or not, right? That's we have to ask them to do something. I mean, that's we told we had things come up at the meeting and we made suggestions. What was the girl's name? Elizabeth Wood. Okay. Right. Oh, I mean, very good. Right. All right. See what she's doing. Okay. So, is, Eli, it, is there Eli, anybody doing? Eli Manning. Something. I don't. Know, I'll talk to her though. Um, is there anybody who's the interface with them besides me? You're the CMRPC contact. I know, but has anyone been talking to him about Village Owning? I think Paul had made a couple of emails to just follow Did, up after yeah. the meeting, but that was it. Probably if you need that, uh, I may go, go, I may maybe there if, able, if I want to talk to them. And even, like, even a section that is, if I live here, what does this mean for me? Like, just straight out. Right. And it's like, if I live nothing. here, if this is my house and this zoning goes on top of it, what does that mean right. for me? Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, and, and make that, you know, beneficial to them. Right, know? right. Well, I mean, yeah, if it's, if it's something we, we do. think. That's it, the right. idea, right? Yeah. Just, the, I think it's just, it's part of the language, like you said, but bylaws, no, like that. Right, the reading a bylaw doesn't really get you. They, they read Wait a minute, it says that no convenience stores, but you say you want a convenience store. But what, through. and yeah. yes, and then it's confusing. Right. What? drive through, And no drive through. Well, drive throughs are allowed here. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Picture you see yourself. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, we did it twice. Is it done? Right. But that's okay. what I mean. That's what we need CMRPC to clean up their. You want them to do it? Or, well, they, or you? They provided it. Oh. Well, you want me to read I the housing production it. plan? or? No, no, that's done. Don't worry about that. Now. That's actually that's true. I, mean, <laughs> I don't have to look at it. That's right. I want them to do something nice, okay. like we just saw. Right? Actually, that's, I mean, that's not simple the, and easy to read. And like I just said, you know, what, if I look here, what is this? I like the, the way these guys do their presentations, which is way different than the way CMRPC does their work. I mean, I, I, I don't, I guess I don't care which one does it, but these guys seem to have a get it done kind of presentation right. than the other guys. Cog instead of CMRPC. Yeah. Right. What the so, audience needs. Yeah. Are you going to talk to CMRPC? Yeah, I have no. I'll, I'll say that I will. I'll see if I do. Talk to Elizabeth Wood. And talk to her. Don't write anything down. Just talk. Well, I can write something Get down. Get another feeling. I just chat with her. and She's no, all right. She's not very chatty. No? You can make up for it. I will. <laughs> Holy Cross Contemplative Center has bills? We, are we check those out. Yeah. What? I'll contact okay. Holy Cross and find out. Actually, I'll contact we didn't Anita. Get back Anita was so. going to. So I'll contact Anita. Yeah. Contact Anita. Status. Okay. Police station close on update. It's all done. That's all it checks out. We're waiting for the response. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Post discussion of time meeting warrant article. That Do is we have the warrant? Should that they send it out? Has the warrant come out? I haven't oh, seen it. I think she sent it out today. It is. Yeah. Did you check the boxes? It wasn't in the box. So we don't that have one? Oh, put it and go to the website. Yeah, because we have to have one article. No, this, it's all signed. Go ahead. We have we to. Can't, you mean on there? Yeah. I can't, because that thing has no internet access, I can't connect to the a browser and the internet at the same time. It's kind of screwball. All right, so all we need to know is what articles there are that we have to vote on, because there's I zone one. Get it? Okay. Yeah, zoning ones, yes. Yeah. Yep. Zoning by last second. Let me get it. I may have. No, she put it in before she left. Tonight there was nothing in the box. Let me go check. Since we're taking a break, it looks like. <laughs> Hurry up. Oh. Okay. I think I'll beat Raj back. Right. Close the door. Open the cards. Take us up at 8.30. Yeah. He left at 8.30. Mm -hmm. Next time, I think we ought to all be here. Right. So I'm going to go at 8.30. <laughs> 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 I just walk out. I'm sitting here by myself. Got to go.
meeting all over? Okay. No. Mm. No, we're uh, on a break. Yeah. Sort of. No. Okay. 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 Did you get the 90s movies weekend? No. Okay. Do that quickly. Run. Old business number five. Can I just tell you one quick thing about um, about the, the ZBA thing? What ZBA? Oh, the, the agenda. Justin Gabriel. Yeah. That no, not, that's coming up. I know that may not take place. Yeah. Oh. Yes, sir. You, what is that about? Um, going to get the meeting, uh, town meeting warrant. We haven't gotten the town meeting warrant, so he's got to go get it out of his car. Here, I have, I have what is on the website. Yeah, because we have to make recommendations sometimes, and I don't know what all the articles are. Vinny. Oh, look at that. Where'd you get that? What do you think, town clerk's office? Ah. All right, so. So we don't need one, two, ban adult use marijuana. What do we have to do here? What is our role? As That's a general by We, yeah, as a planning board, to approve, uh, recommend approval. Okay. Not. Yes. Recommend approval of only some of them? Or oh, all generally some the of them. zoning bylaws. If okay. it's zoning. So this is a general, article two is a general bylaw. Gotcha. So it's I'll not us. So you finish? Um, sure. To see if the town will zoning bylaw. So we have to. Vote on Article 3. Gotcha. Establishing a sales tax is not part of the zoning. Right, okay. Wait, Article 3, what do you have? I'm sorry, Article 3. I'm sorry, Article, three Article 4 is sale. not. Yep, that's okay, right. Yeah. Article 3, we need to make a recommendation. Article 4, the sales tax, we don't. And then the personnel bylaw, the personnel least, bylaw somebody is. Somebody said that's getting passed over. Sorry, well, that's not us anyway. Fiscal year appropriations, appropriate, no, appropriate, 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 transfer cemetery funds, appropriate. That's none of us. Appropriate, pay not bills. To nine. We no, accept MGL to establish OPEB fund. Oh, that's Good that's number. Time. Citizen position, petition to approve rainbow crosswalks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, don't go there. <laughs> Pretty sure it's illegal, but we'll see. Do you want to voice an, an not opinion on as the a, road? As the planning board. No. No, we just, I mean, all it is is a call to the Mass Department of Transportation to find out if it's allowed. That's what, but that's. So, Chairman. Oh, well, that's it? That's all there is? So it's just the one. That's it. Just sixteen. Right? Okay. Yeah. So it's Article Three, right? Article Three, I think. Is Zoning. It, no, the, the marijuana one says. Yeah. To well, what about vote the, to amend the town zoning bylaw to put in marijuana bylaw establishments. Blah 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 blah. Do we have a copy of it? She sent that out too. Who sent that out? You edited it. I, that's not the yeah. final version. There's a whole bunch okay. of stuff that still so needs to be done. What about you edited? It did go to the, after you were edit, it was uh, town administrator did send it to the uh, KP law. And the, we did get the comments from them. Yep. Last night, you know, we did, the subcommittee did meet, and then we made a bunch of corrections. Good. So with that corrections and additions, you know, uh, again, uh, town administrator is checking on it. And we see also has a couple of questions with the town councils. Okay. After that, we will get the full version. All right. And then it will be posted. So we don't has have anybody seen anything? Well, we, we have the draft. But that's no, no, no. Draft. I mean the town, like before the meeting. We will be posting it, I guess. Right? With the map. Probably on the town website already. It is already moving. Which, which changes, the changes were not okay. substantial. No, no. Oh, okay. It didn't change anything. Yeah. Okay. Well, whatever we gave. The biggest change we did was the... Uh, Deleting the medical marijuana information out of it because it was already in the medical mm -hmm. marijuana. Right, 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 right. Okay. And referring to the existing, the current medical marijuana By bylaw it. stuff. We already have it as 3.12. I, I don't know where we reverse it. So this bylaw is only for the recreational. Right. So the town the council use, recommends. Yes. So that was the, the, that was the medical part. Okay. Yes. So yep. Sanitized out sense. the medical stuff. Yep. That's good. 
Oh, well, that's not well, we had right. we had major changes. The uh, the P and planning board was in line. Oh, that's true. And the A and uh, ah, okay, uh, good. All right, then there we go. Typos. I was, I was getting nervous that we were, you know. Um, this is special. Nobody has seen it. Yes. The S in special, the B in permit, the B in planning, the B in board. What's that map you got there? This is the this is the updated map that uh, Anita sent out. I don't know so exactly what this one's about. Like an hour ago. Oh. Okay. Um, I don't know what that one's about really. It looks it's, like zoning. It does, but I don't know. Right. Like it's got these purple and green zones, but there is no. But there's purple no budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all right, I'm gonna ignore that one. But this one is one that shows the red zones are where. And Things are allowed. And this one has the conservation land in red, which I think is not red. Well, they're right? establishing, they're allowing the use in, we the, in the red. In I, the yeah, I thought we weren't. Oh, I thought we weren't. No, I thought you could grow it there. Not allowed. Well, con not con conservation or the. Uh, like the I thought that it, we were not. We were not permitting it in the conservation section. Am I owned, wrong conservation about that? owned by who? The, the, the town owned property on Tiffany it's Drive. The green, and it's the jail. green section on yours, which, see, that's why I think it's confusing because you don't, I don't, oh, know, I don't know what that means versus this one. Conservation and uh, limited. I thought that was on the, I mean, I'm no, just, I'm, think, I'm trying to think of that yeah. chart that said, you know, no, special that's, permits, that's not conservation, permits, it's commercial or not commercial allowed. Yeah. I thought conservation, and well, I, I mean, I can't really read, but just just says on there. So we have these. Little circles here. Yeah. The little circles are the those locations matter, of yeah. um, daycare. So that's the only ones that allow. So you can put one in these. No. Three no. 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 Those the are, circles these have to are... be the daycares are. They're purple, not red. Oh. Well, can I get this up there? Yeah. Can you put that up there? Oh. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So you got three I circles see. going I up. I see. That is purple. Street. No, I get it. I get is it. Is it purple? I well, that is. Okay. It's not. A, it is, but it's okay. not. It's nice. not a. Uh, I just couldn't tell. Whatever it's, it is. it's not super distinct. So, uh, yeah. I thought that the one change they should do is put the water back in, put the just so in. the people can sort of orient themselves. So these could be then. This is a better map for sure. Yeah. So yeah, you the, can take a look at this one if you want, but this one. So a marijuana facility free. could be put up. In where am I? Is that what's that street that goes out there? We got something. So that's. What's this area up here? At the, industrial? That's Oakdale. So Oakdale could have the marijuana. Oh, that's area. business. No, no, out here. That's a B for business. Oh, I think that's the. Uh, if there's the business area around. Is that where the um, yeah. antique store and stuff Oakdale. is? Oakdale. Okay. Right. Yeah. Oakdale near the yeah the antique store in that gold place or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. Yep, so they would be Good. able to do it there. There's no schools. I thought there was a church right there. Oh, oh isn't there? A church. There's so totally a church right there. Double so are we not setting, having a 500-foot setback there's, from churches? Oh. The 500-foot setback actually makes it so CVS can't sell it because of uh, woodland. Yeah, but th these things Where's are Where's that? Not, but you're right. There's not a church. There's The church is not on there. Right, so, this, so if you look Shoot. at this, if <laughs> you look at this yeah. map... It's saying it's allowed at Salter School, which I think is that, yes. isn't it? Because that's not a under twelve. It's not a K through under twelfth grade. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought you just said, who, where can't you do it? Oh, it's CVS. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Because of the five hundred foot. Oh, from the playground. From the playground, from the Woodland Park. Woodland Park is five hundred feet up. All right. Well, I think what we need to do is we need to, I think, make a recommendation on Article 2 just to protect us. I'm not sure in the zoning, because it was voted on last year for it to be heard again, there's some wording within the zoning requirements, and I just looked at this quickly last night. It needs to be voted on positively by the planning board for, it, to for the same yeah. thing to be shown up sooner than two years. Okay. So, so we can... What, what do we turn down? The no, the motion to... The, the prohibition article. The prohibition last year, 
a year ago was turned down. For something that gets turned down to get raised again, I think, at town meeting needs a planning board vote to recommend uh, to recommend approval. The board can vote no, but we recommend approval so that it can be heard as a town meeting yeah. vote again. Well, what, do you, what do you want to do? There's, there's two articles. There's the article, so the article, article two. I make so a motion. Article two. Yeah. Okay. Can I make a motion to motion to planning board recommend, recommend planning board article two approval approval which is approval. to appear on the warrant to recommend approval of article two yeah which is article two is that the denial that's the prohibition that's the, no, the prohibition of okay. the okay. the only reason I think we need to do that I'm not sure if it's a general bylaw but I, I I'm pretty sure in a zoning bylaw it has to happen that way for it to be so reconsidered wait, but, but what's, what's the motion there's a motion to recommend approval of the prohibition of the article yeah. Uh, to to for the article to appear in the warrant, no, right? No, no, that's all, no, that's all done. It's recommend. We have to recommend. Oh, we have approval. to. We have to, yeah, recommend recommend to prove it. And I don't know if the bylaw and approve the other bylaw. We recommend so that they both go to the town meeting. Okay. The other one can go because it's brand new, so they can. Uh, and we just have a recommendation on it. This one, I I'm not exactly sure, so I could be wrong. Can, but can we do we, something besides recommend the approval? Because I don't think we no. want to make it sound like a planning board. Wants planning to. board recommends ban it. Right. I yes. don't know. Because so the planning board, I don't think it makes the right vibe if we say rec planning board recommends the prohibition of marijuana bill. And then know. we recommend the then, <laughs> and then recommend the concerning by the right. I don't. Know. I what I read. And what I sent to everybody on the board was the how to do a zoning bylaw. When I read that, it said something about if it has been denied within yeah. the last two years, it can't be brought up again. Unless, unless it has, a, it has vote. a vote to recommend by the planning board. So that's what we did. So that's if we want it, if it if we want that the town to be able to consider it, we need to vote to recommend approval, I think. I'm not sure, but if, if I'm right and we then vote Let's say we Can don't we vote on discussion? it. If, if we vote not to do anything with it, yeah. and it passes, the town no, votes you, to pass when it. No, when the, when, the, when the article was read, the moderator asked the questions, you know, is there any other board uh, yeah. recommends? So planning board recommends. Oh, how about, can we, can we, just recommend? can we, can we recommend that we approve to allow it to be no. heard no, again? No, because I it's been so. already been allowed by the select board. I don't know. So it's there. Okay. I mean, we can so recommend can approval, but if we recommend approval of the abolition of marijuana, then it's kind of a, I don't want people to get the wrong impression handbook. that no, you we're... Are not. You are not. Just for the article, right? We're just no. reading the article. When you hear that the planning board, board recommends, recommends approval of an article, do you think they recommend that we hear the article or they recommend approval of the article? Right. I think the latter. That's... Yeah. Usually, <laughs> generally, that's... But I don't... It's... Did anyone else read that? No, I never read that. So, I got it. I mean, can you look on the zoning? Uh, actually, I have it as a, a link, but it's going to take forever. It's on the CH, DHCD's website for zoning enactment, zoning, zoning adoption. DHCD? Yeah. Because it could be that if we don't do this and the town votes for it, it gets thrown out because it's already been voted a year ago and it's not allowed to go before the town meeting. But that could only be zoning bylaws. I'm not. I'm not sure. I assume this, this went to town. Did this go to town council? So town council believes that it can be voted on and acted on at town at town meeting. So they don't say this one's okay, this one. They just say they tell us if there's issues with any of the articles. Okay, so that I would hope that they would pick up on that, and then we wouldn't. So maybe they they know it, and it's not since it's not a zoning bylaw. It's not a zoning bylaw. Then why? Then the planning board doesn't need to. I. It said something about an article that gets voted down needing to get. A recommendation, a positive recommendation by the planning board. Is what? It, zoning by law? it doesn't say whether it's zoning. That's what I 
Don't remember. We're trying to get there. No, the attic yeah. itself. It's not zoning, no. So why would it be? Why would it be? Because, yeah. you know, this up, because uh, the banning article was there, right? No, not, not that. It's in there, but it's not zoning, you said. So Correct. why it's, is it more, even is it more about it's, it's a, bi it's a, a general bylaw. I don't know if it's pr procedure. And that's, if, every, if everybody is okay with giving it a go, then I'm fine. But I don't, I would hope the town council would have picked it up so that it may not even be an issue. But I just looked at it last night and saw something. So, how do you want to change the wording to to hear the bylaw? Do hear the article, planning board. I don't know. Recommends to hear the article. Well, that that, that was what I think we mean. Because yeah. I don't think yes. we yeah. we would rather pass the zoning article than the general bylaw. Okay, I mean, changed my motion to planning board. planning board to hear the article too. I don't second know if it's needed. I don't. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Okay, so we took back the first motion. We're doing yeah. the second motion. Right. Which is just. Oh, where's Melanie? We need. Hold on. Oh, hang on. This isn't. Nothing's happening. If Melanie doesn't write this down. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Just come on out. Yeah. Just get it over. If you don't. It may need it. Or it may not be needed. But on the safer side, you know, let's have it. How does that affect the moratorium? The moratorium, moratorium expires is entirely December thirty first. Well, I guess what we could do is we could recommend approval in the meeting, not say anything when the moderator asks or doesn't ask. <laughs> You know, you have to make a recommendation. They ask for a recommendation for it. Is, it. is there any other board no, recommends? It's, it's not a zoning article, so we don't have to recommend. They're not gonna so we have the, we will have it in our minutes if the, um, if it's a question, if they question the, the legality of whether it should be on the warrant, we'll have it in our minutes. Does we don't have to say anything. Do you have to move on that too? Well, they have to I don't know it enough. I have to read it. I don't have it. So, so I changed the motion to hear Planning board approves. Planning recommend board. to hear that. Need a pen? Sorry, yeah, I lost that one. Okay. Planning board yeah. approves to Recommends. recommend uh, to hear the that article. article. To what? The hearing of, of Article 2. The hearing of the article. Of Article 2. Yes. Yeah. Uh, all in favor? Or second, who seconded? Oh, I seconded. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, because that's the idea. We just need to get the town Say it's, it. yeah, for sure. Okay. So next is Article I'm 3. Ready. You want to move it? No. So, motion to recommend approval mm -hmm. by the Planning Board for Article 3, Regulation of Sale and Distribution of Adult Use Marijuana. Second. 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 Any discussion? No. no. All in favor? Aye. 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 Right. Any other zoning ones? Nope. What's that last one? The one about the the, 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 the crosswalks? That's a transportation committee thing. That yeah, again, that's not that's a not citizen's petition. Board. It's not a zoning. No. They're not asking to change it. No. Okay. Nope. That's a citizen's petition. That's all. Great. Thank you, Dave. Check. Okay. Thank you. And who's going to do the? Who is going to stand up for the planning board to give the recommend? Mark Frieda. I'm not He's not available. available. Yeah. It's probably either Paul it. or. Yeah. Oh, Are you yeah, on to the meeting? Paul, I was going to say, I can do it. I'm going to go to the meeting. Okay. But maybe Paul should do it since he's the chair. He's chair, but yeah. Okay. Okay. So we have somebody who's going to stand up. And we'll tell them what we told them. We'll tell them. Yeah. yeah we'll we'll tell tell them. Oh, you left early. Yeah. So we elected you. So you're, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to talk a lot. All right. No. no. So, votes no. and discussion, right? So, are we done with yep. any yep. other more? Yep. All right. I'm done. CBA petition about 57 mail. <coughs> yeah, I drafted something on that. Um, did anyone have any addition changes, thoughts? I thought it was good. For your, is your thing in this? It's, it's underneath. underneath. Yep. yep. It's underneath what you're holding in here. Any edits? Any discussion? So we'll, nope. So we'll sign it or oh. send it in or. Do you need the building inspector name? Yeah, we don't. I, don't know. Uh, I have it. Yeah, it's just a building inspector. No. Did I email? I emailed this to you, so you have it, right? Yeah, yeah. I have it. So George. No. Tick T A G, N O R N O R. Tignor. T-A-G-N-O-R. Okay, T-A-G-N-O-R. 
tag me. And you want to send it with Paul's name on it, or you want to change that to to be me for now, so I can sign it? Um, I mean, I don't mind leaving Paul. We just tell him that we did. Uh, she'll, Melanie can just sign it for mm-hmm. Paul, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, you just put your initials. <coughs> I know. Okay, I don't even think we need a motion or anything. It's just. If so edits, it, just is there a way you could send this one or uh, throw it copy? Oh, because maybe tomorrow. So already. there may be uh, something. Uh, like he may the building inspector will be here tomorrow, so he may need to see this. In the morning. You want to just leave one of these over there? Computer's not on, so. What are you at the vice chair? Sign it, and we can. What time? What time? Doing like this. Doing it. You can you write. Know, five. <laughs> <laughs> 803 would be good. Well, <laughs> get there at 803. So Maybe. So 805 would be good, Raj? No, uh, Mark Earl. is going to sign it. Tag it. Uh, take the AG take and all. He might need this. Should I do Paul Anderson or should I just cross it out and do Mark? Just put Mark or Freedom on the list. Yeah. Sure, Paul Anderson. Right. That's okay. All right. So he's when taking you, care when of you it. Finish you can now. sleep in tomorrow. When you finish that, right, you can get, make sure you get the license. <laughs> yeah. What time are we going to have here? So that the board you members can... You want the draft? Yeah, so the board members can get it. And we can send it to the petitioner. And sure. Check. He's going to leave that copy, which is just assigned by me, vice chair, for him. circulated to everybody who's normal. Just send them the other draft, the electronic draft out. Send him an electronic drop, but he's got that thing. So tomorrow morning's rush is all taken care of. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about that. He's already got the one that's going. He's got one for them, but we need to send it off to officially send it to everybody. In in an email attachment, that kind of thing. To the uh, to the rest of the ZBA and the applicant. Do we we don't send it to the applicant? No, we just strictly to ZBA. Toby will send it to Actually, I sent it to Toby. That's why I don't. All right. All right, so we're done with that one, okay. Was there any discussion? Would anybody want to talk about it at all? I, you guys no. didn't. I, so I, I, I put whatever I had in there, there, so. Okay. Did you tell them not to or to stop work? To what? Uh, the stop work order for construction. Did you tell them to stop work or not to stop work? No, I supported the idea that his... The idea of a 25 foot setback seems appropriate. Okay. Because I was initially, I was thinking that the lot went down to the road somewhere, but the lot actually stops. So the frontage of the lot is right on that right of way. Oh, it's it not does. really a right of way. It's a right of way on someone else's property, but his frontage really is right there. So he should have the front yard. Oh, the front yard setback, not the 25 foot setback from the frontage. Okay. Which makes sense, which I think Chris is what Chris said. Oh boy. So now, uh, one building inspector said go ahead. Next building inspector said stop. And now the third building inspector has to deal with the yes. problem. Okay. That's what Chris wants to say. It's the same thing that I had showed you and asked yeah. you one question about. Oh, wow. I mean, we talked about this. Well, the question about, you know, because he was saying something about site plan review, and I asked. Oh, yeah, right. And you said that. I don't think we ever do residential site plan review. Okay, can I help you? Yes. Okay. You're right. 90 Sterling Street update? Anything? Anybody that, that all got postponed. Is this. Yeah, because we were supposed to invite them to this meeting. Oh, and I didn't, didn't hear anything else. So I guess they never got, no invitation was oh. sent. You want to put them on the next agenda and invite them? Yes. I did talk Melanie, to can you our, invite them? I did talk to you about what they did, Tim Brown. Exactly. They still have That's the whole point here. Who is it? Uh, McDavid? Yeah, but it's Craig also Sullivan. wanted Lionel, Craig Wombo. Craig and Tim, Tim Brown. Tim, that's the one I wanted. Right. All right, housing production plan's done. Yep. yep. Okay. We have this letter here to Paul from Ruto. Yeah, we all read it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks. Yeah.
Thank you. We all read it. Yeah. Have we all been sanctioned? Yeah, we all look fine. Next. Thank you. Is that your summary of, from Collier's? I don't know what this is. Is this about the uh, his senior the center? Daddy? Senior oh, center. Uh, Collier's oh, is senior good. center. Oh, good. So they have the report. Isn't this the report that we were looking for? That yeah, we got it. So right. we, That's yeah. good. They are doing the site uh, watch for mm -hmm. the. Mm -hmm. Letter from waste management. A question. I have a question came up as to whether the town has an agreement with the waste management to not travel on Maple Street with their trucks. Question it's Lucy Lucier. She suggested I ask the two ask the two of you. Zoning and totally oh, zoning. Okay. As maybe zoning or planning because she knows of no agreement with the board of selectmen. She also said she recalls something and I suggested I look in our file. So I heard that you know waste management trucks are traveling towards the Maple Street. So they are not supposed to come this way, right? Is that the way it was approved? How was the site plan? The the site plan, I, I'm pretty sure we said that. Yeah. It was, um, but recently, you know, the trucks are coming from the waste management to this site. So that's what the complaint I did. To, to what site? Some of the residents did call me too. Okay. So, so we need to find the approval, approval for waste management. So the clerk will take care of that. Right? Uh, we'll try. Is it Vinny the clerk? Yeah. Oh, you want to do that? Oh, you thought you were going to do that? No, I thought Melanie was going to do that. No, that's not, never will happen. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. But when, 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 I mean, when was that? It was that? a long time ago. Long oh, time ago. It was not the, well, actually, it probably would have come up again on there because they what requested a, part, a site plan review for the parking across the street. So it would have come up then. So it was probably 2012. 2010. No way. But you can, they did I, their parking before that. I look, you, waste can, you can check your old emails, right? Yeah. They didn't have email then. <laughs> I don't. I think it was before 2012. I think it was even before like 20 or whatever. You think it was in the 90s that they put all that stuff in? I have no idea. I think so. I can look. The parking lot's been there a long, long time. Yep. Did you approve the site plan review? We did. Oh, then, the, so not 1990. No. Yeah. Oh, when, when was your first time on? I got. On, I've been on since 97, I think. Oh, okay. I think it was one of the first ones you did that. That's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah, you look for it. Well, I was on a con con before that, so it, I, I'm all over it, one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Next. Okay. Moving along. So that's right. you. Okay. Yeah. Motion to approve the minutes. Se September 26 minutes. You're you skipping the reports from other boards. Nothing. No. Nothing Any other boards? There's lots of reports from other boards. Uh, nope. Nope. Oh, no, that sounds good. Okay, the minutes. Do you do your motion again? Motion to approve uh, September 26 uh, meeting minutes. Second. Regular meeting minutes. Did I send out the other ones for the yeah. marijuana? Yeah. Nope. But I didn't copy. Right, but did I send it to everybody? Mm -hmm. Did I send it to the board? No. Nope. Oh, okay. Nope. Right. But I so motion this. and second. I second that. Yeah. Second, second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Here, sign. 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 What? All these bills. Your treasurer, you have to sign them. That's the best. Actually, what are they for? Let's keep moving. I want my glass. That's what I came for. Oh. Time sheet's good, too. Who is the assistant before? Oh, you can sign. I used to sign it for her too. Uh, Sue. Sue. Remember, she would deliver with she would deliver uh, packets. She was great. Oh, she was the best. <laughs> <laughs> she was the best. Yeah. Yeah. That was good old. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have to 
do it. She does it herself. <laughs> Throw the do you want this? On the ZBA bench. petition? What? Do you want this copy of ZBA petition? Yeah. But I don't want this. Tough luck, that. Here you go. You sign it all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All the bills. Okay. Yeah. Just hide them in I have another copy. That was uh, Paul's one. Just Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, before that. Aye. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Before that. We didn't vote. So can we change that citizens' comments, like the select board, first, the first item? So you want uh, the citizen to be waiting here until the end of the meeting? <laughs> so he's still waiting, you know. I'm not, no, I'm not waiting for nothing. I have nothing to say. So no next so agenda. I Let's see. move it to the top. Well, yes, after the, chair, the, pub after well, the public hearings. Yeah. yeah. yeah no. About we just usually yeah. added that on as a... I don't want to do that, because then it. if we give them five minutes, we have to wait five minutes, because all the public hearings are going to start. Yeah, but he's all on. No, the public hearings we don't first. Want the, we don't oh, want the... Yeah, okay. We can do it after public hearings. No, we don't want the citizens to be waiting here for the, until the end of the meeting, you know. You like to be here until 10.30. I do. Yeah. Me too. So, so how, we can put it in there. Yeah, just five minutes. Why don't we just put in notes that citizens' notes may, may be moved ahead in the agenda or something? Centrally, you know, not, you know, you know nobody's going to talk. It still has the old. No, no, I'm just saying that we, I don't want to promise citizen comments that they get it first thing. From the mixed ability. Just in case there's a, uh, and I don't want Melanie to have to rearrange every schedule to have citizen comments in the middle. Should we adjourn? No. No, we have the we're motion and the second. The motion and second. And we have to to adjourn. So where, where do you want to put the agenda item of citizen comments? Oh. I don't know. Where is you it? Want it's, it's, right now, it's, at the, it's the last thing before we do the payment of invoices. And the suggestion is that it come after, public after any public hearings. Right, but the chair can always invite. I think I would like that. Not. I would rather put it down so there. So in other boards. The citizen comments is first, because you know. Yeah, but they don't have public hearings. Yeah, but we do have public hearing. Will you promise people? Are we out of the norm? So five minutes. All the other boards. So you can so you can set citizens. your times like five minutes. That's fine. In the, in That's this, what I mean. We'll have to wait five, five minutes. Five minutes or ten minutes. Yeah. We'll Normally, you know. If there's a public hearing, hearing, put it after the public hearing. Yeah, yeah sure. Do you want to do that? Do you want to we'll get them out of there? Citizens here with comments, and if there aren't any, then we just move along, right? You can't move. You can't just move on to a public hearing if it's scheduled for later. You have to no, start. No, 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 no. Uh, it goes the after the public hearing. hearing. Do you want to do it after? Or you know. can just get them out. Or right, you know, let let's table it. We'll talk about next meeting. No, we can go well, after. Exactly. If there's nothing on the, if there's nothing, no hearings on the agenda that night. It'll be the first thing on. If there's hearings, the hearing. it comes after the hearing. But I mean, that, but his right. his point yeah, about citizens right. don't want to wait till the end of the meeting. They probably don't want to wait till the public hearing either. You know. Well, they come that. and they can see that the public hearing is at 7.30. And then yeah, but public are, hearing no, is 7.30. 7. 7.30 means you know, the public hearing is not going to be done by, if you say 8 o'clock, it's not done. We are sitting here for around 9.30, right? Some of the housing production plan was there for around one, one and a half hours. So, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Just so five we minutes, we ten minutes, we can set the comments. Oh, I would say and then, one you know, minute, get it over. 7.01, the public hearing start. Just so that if nobody shows up, we don't have to wait 10 minutes. Well, technically, the only thing you, have, you can always take those citizen comments out of order. The only right. thing you have to do is put your hearings on at the right, right time. So other than that, you can talk about. Or later. Yes. Yes. So uh, we could just but do it, and that's what we used I mean, to do. Would you be so happy if we just put a comment in under that's citizen's cool. comments that this may be taken at the beginning of the meeting? It goes for us. I think you know, it should be done as like a sit first citizen's comment. And then if comment, they're sitting here, we want to talk to them, we can do it. Okay. Just do it. Okay. I, mean, I, don't, I don't mind either, but I would just put it in for one minute. Yeah, just a suggestion, you know, so if you... Okay. What do you think? Most, most all in favor? No, we got to figure out this. We just this, did. It's all done. Saying. It's all done. If you have to let me know what happened then. Oh, Mr. Chair. You weren't listening. Yes. Vice Chair, Act Chair, whatever you want. Um, assistant. Oh, Assistant Chair. No. 
If there's nothing on, if there's no hearings, it's going to go on first. If there's any hearings, it's going to follow those. Oh boy. Why? I mean, people are going to still be, they'd be sitting here now. I know they do be sitting here now, and they don't like that now. Well, then you can't please everybody. That's, that's earlier than yeah, it would have been. Maybe we should make it at 650. Yeah. <laughs> you won't be here. Exactly. <laughs> All citizens' comments at 650. We'll have to start our meetings earlier then. Six o'clock, right? Can we start with this? Okay. All right, so we're going to start with that. No motion, no nothing. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 Do you want it moved or not? Yes, move it. Okay.